Welcome to episode 24. You've made it to the week in wrap up, a show where we review all episodes of WWE and AEW and more. That's 12 plus hours of wrestling content this week. We'll watch it and tell you what happened and share our viewpoints here on All Things Wrestling. Welcome back to the show, new listeners and OGs. We are your hosts. I'm Ernie. That's Michael. Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah. And we're the Bill and Ted of this podcast. Right. While dallying it through hours and hours of wrestling content, so you don't have to. The weekend is finally here. Time to open up a can of that delicious Zoa energy drink and spend an hour or so on this podcast talking about this week in wrestling. Uh, and oh I'll yeah! Open my truly pineapple. Truly pineapple. Meanwhile, I got super berry, the blue one. Oh, nice. I've had that one. That one's good. Oh, very delicious. They're all good, actually, so far. I think I—I I don't know if I've tried them all. I've had about four of them. Hey, gotta read the back. My fellow everyday warriors, Zoa is about healthy, positive energy that helps us all focus, be productive, and get. And stronger together, mana gratitude, Zoa, Uncle Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle DJ. <laughs> All right, on. cool. Uh, so we have a bit of news for you. Oh yeah, okay. I gotta drink that again. <laughs> All right. So according to the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Uh, Bret Hart quietly signed a lucrative contract with WWE, thus making an appearance that we hoped he would have with AEW. Hmm. Since they're doing the whole Owen Hart Foundation of reality. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. He was going to come out to the ring with FDR, but now it will be in a match at a big-time wrestling event. You know, a show that's not televised. Oh, this This explains a tweet CM Punk made on Wednesday that a locker room was reserved for a very special guest and wasn't able to show his face. Both FTR and CM Punk are huge Bret Hart fans and have been public about how much they look up to him. He's got good taste, then. He's my favorite, too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's the Owen Hart Foundation. Why Why would he sign uh, re-sign with them instead of AEW? He didn't then again, he did say he didn't know what AEW was planning for him. Then he also didn't know what they were planning with the Owen Hart Foundation, but yeah. you know, your brother's name was on this card. You should just wait it out a bit. Don't care how much. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how they treat him over in WWE. Yeah. You know, he has, he's making a movie, too. Oh, who? Brett? Brett Hart with Corey oh. Feldman. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Tales from the Dead Zone. It's, I will say it is kind of cool. Uh, it, I got on my Facebook, it says, um, like, you, you know, because a lot of people are doing, what do you call those things? It's, it's, I guess, but basically, like, if you pay $95, they'll name you as an associate producer and like stuff like that. Nice. That's kind of cool. And it, it, I saw one thing. If you pay, I think it's like, Pretty much more or less two thousand um, dollars. They actually put you in the next movie. Oh, so, look at that! I'd probably it's do it if I had sequel. it. It's gonna be a sequel. <laughs> so if you awesome fans out there want to see my beautiful face on a movie, two G's. That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Speaking of Zoa. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is teaming up with Amazon Studios to adapt a popular video game franchise. It takes two into a movie. Not Doom. Please not Doom again. Not Doom. It's called It Takes Two. Oh, that's what it's called. Oh, wow. and it won a bunch of Game of the Year awards last, I don't know, last year. Oh, Variety wow. reports Johnson, Danny Garcia, and Hiram Garcia will produce it on behalf of Seven Bucks Productions. Although The Rock could also star in the film... Nothing is official for now. Pat Casey and Josh Miller, who write for all Sonic the Hedgehog films, are turning the game into a movie and will also serve as executive producers. 
the game was first released back in March of 2021 and won several Game of the Year awards. The plot and game and now movie follows May and Cody having their minds transported into two dolls at their daughter, Rose, made to present them at a time when they're going through a divorce. Okay. They have to go through a wild journey to get back into their bodies. Uh, weird. It reminds me of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I was say, I'm looking at the picture now. And it, yeah. Garcia and Johnson are currently busy with their Hollywood schedules in addition to spearheading the relaunch of the XFL next year. It was recently announced that two of the Rock movies have been pushed back for release. DC League of Super Pets will now be released on July 29, 2022, and Black Adam is scheduled for October 21, 2022. In addition to this project, The Rock is producing a new Christmas movie for Amazon. Hey, Oh. Ooh, the, He's gonna take Steve Harvey's title as the busiest man in Hollywood. Yeah, hardest working man. Acknowledge the Rock. I, I don't know. Oh, you know him being busy. I don't know about that. WrestleMania next year. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe he won't have time. Yeah. Maybe it looks it will like be 2032. Uh, maybe, maybe um, the Rock won't have time, and they're gonna have to wait. So I guess uh, another year of Roman Reigns being the champion. Well, that's fine. I, I can accept that. Uh, undefeated. He, he's Many doing. He, are, are we seriously getting the the Bruno Sammartino treatment? The modern yeah. day Bruno Sammartino? It could be. Maybe. Uh, who was the. Was it Honky Tonk Man that had the Intercontinental belt forever? But he was defeated in house shows. No. Oh. Bruno Sammartino oh, didn't get defeated at all. At all. I mean, yeah. granted, there was a whole. Um, he defended his title year after year, mm-hmm. but still, he still wasn't okay. defeated. Um, yes, he Honky Tonk Man was probably defeated like in the house shows and a mm-hmm. non title matches. Yeah, and, okay. and sure. He did keep that belt for a year, and so did Santino. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. He was having his own streak also, but couldn't make it. I will say. Oh, uh, speaking of that, It Takes Two, I just wanted to mention uh, my favorite It Takes Two was actually the movie starring the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Really? Just in case anybody. No, not really. It's no, true no. that's a movie, but that was not my favorite movie. Because I thought mine was um, with Lindsay Lyon. It Takes Two. Yeah, well, well that was The Parent Trap. My Parent bad. Trap. Uh, there were two, but and it did take two, but it wasn't called It Takes Two. Hey, Lindsay Lohan and her twin sister. Yeah, her twin self sister. Yeah, well, you didn't know she had a twin. <laughs> I did not know. Yeah, you know her and her sister did two movies together. She was also with her on. Um, <laughs> the only two, that was the only two movies her sister did, and then she disappeared. Uh, why did I watch that? <laughs> Son of a fish! Oh man, I, that I needed. Yeah, uh, it took a lot out of me. I mean, what two hours of my life went missing? <laughs> yeah, that was. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was a fan of hers back then, so I probably didn't. Uh, I liked it more than I should have. We'll say that. Wow. I'm sure if it was anybody else, I would have been like, "Yeah." Let's get to the shows. <laughs> All right. All right. Monday Night Raw. Uh, show opens up with Seth Rollins. Um, the Seth Rollins show. His first guest is Cody. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seth, no favorite. Uh, um, he's my number four, actually. Oh. <laughs> Not my favorite, but, you know, my number four in the fantasy league that we have going on oh, right now. Right, right. Yeah, so, like, if he was my number one, it'd be like, number one, yeah. <sighs> uh, but Seth obnoxiously hyping up to the crowd. Cody being Cody and talking. Oh, man. He talks and talks. He does, doesn't he? A lot. He does. Yeah, he does. Like, I guess he did it in AEW. And, like, it got to the point, like, all right, now, do your thing and cry. Cry, because I know you're going to cry. You're going to shed a tear. Yeah. No. I didn't even like him when he was around in WWE with Damon Sandow as the Rose Scholars. Oh, God, I forgot about that. He, I'm here to always remind people. <laughs> this is much worse. 
Wow, that was wow. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I guess forget this whole promo and why we're here. Cody wants to flex so he can hear the cheers of the crowd. Seth tells him he wasn't prepared to face him at WrestleMania, so he should have a rematch against him. Seth tells where Cody um, on WrestleMania or no, here. Where? Yeah, you're right. I, oh, I'm sorry. Backlash. Yeah. Seth tells Cody that he is better than him. They turn into a pool with the crowd of Buffalo, New York. Yeah. <laughs> they all agree that Cody is better than Seth. But also, Cody should face someone of Seth's choosing without preparation. I wonder who is that going to be. Hmm. Hey, we'll see you later. So, I have a question for you. You know, as I've said in many shows that I haven't watched. I stopped watching for a while. When did Seth Rollins become a main event guy because after the shield disbanded I pretty much didn't think of him at all. Mm. Um yeah that's right. He he obnoxiously got in there. Okay. He but went I mean, in it, there. But the fans I, accept him it seems. So I mean like when did that because I, I felt like at first he wasn't really maybe mid card at best. And now it seems like he's when he won the belt, when he won Money in the Bank, when he okay. went into WrestleMania and defeated Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. One of those okay. matches. One of the yeah. 50 matches okay. bad. And then oh. he lost the belt. He won it again. Mm-hmm. All that stuff, you know. Because, okay. like, um, from my... Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Just from my perspective, like, just watching him on Raw, he's, he seems like such... Like a typical heel, but like from the early 2000s, just his little laugh, his little like even when he was giving the backhanded compliments, like "Oh, Cody, yada yada," and he's like, "Rollins made you pretty much," and it's like, oh, "Okay, yeah." Like, who didn't see that coming? If you've been watching wrestling since like '99, All right? Like, I don't think there's anything special to him. I think he's like, like a, a warmed up re- version of any mid Carter we had between '99 and 2005. Yeah. Totally. I, guess I totally we'll see. see that. Yeah. Um, and, and I did want to just point out one thing. Funny to me, it's, you know, my humor. Uh, was it just me, or did Seth Rollins kind of look like a weak chinned Jorge Masvidal in Matt Hardy v one silk pajamas? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me he wasn't wearing Matt Hardy's pajamas. Remember the, wearing... those silk suits he used to wear when he was V one. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh yes. Oh the freaking curtain the curtains. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. V1 Matitude MFR. There you go. <laughs> All right. So now now do you want to move on to Sasha Banks and Mrs. Uso? Um Na- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Naomi, uh whatever. <laughs> Naomi and it. Sasha Banks defeated Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. Or I should say, your girls, Naomi and Sasha Banks, defeated my girls, Rhea Ripley mm-hmm. and Liv Morgan. Should have um, chose better. <laughs> well, <laughs> after the match, sir, <laughs> after the match, Ripley, <laughs> believe it or not, turns on Liv Morgan. Yeah. Not just a push and a shove, it's the HBK turning on Marty Nettie moment when she hits her Riptide powerbomb on Liv Morgan. Rhea goes solo, and hopefully this means that she will join Edge and Damien Priest soon. Yeah, I so, can see that. Yeah. I... And then, of course, Rhea Ripley gets that extra point for attacking Liv Morgan after the match. Yeah, so, your own people, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I chose better, sir. I chose better. <laughs> well, and I will say that it was cool that they tur- you know, she turned on her, but at the same time, I feel like that was also like a heel turn that we would have seen back when Howard Finkel was announcing matches. I mean, it was it was, it was almost so obvious to me. It was so obvious from when she turned when she left the ring. Yeah, and asked for a rematch. It was like, all right, yeah, that's coming. And like, hey, these other guys look exactly like the way you dress. Are you going? to Oh yeah, with the yeah. yeah, yeah, that's absolutely gonna happen. I do have one question though. This uh trivia thing that you probably can answer for me yeah uh with mrs i mean with naomi is oh, the is God. the glow stick simply a gimmick or is that to highlight the nepotism in her push 
It's been a gimmick for a while. Okay. So, but but what I'm saying is, it is it like yeah, 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 yeah. something somebody came up with, it, or is it literally to highlight? Hey, look at me! I'm married to. Um. <laughs> damn. Because to me, it's like a flashing it's... neon light. Just saying, like Mrs. Uso, like that. She should get the, a tramp stamp. Why are you so hard on the ooze? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta uh, be. You gotta that's be. That's your girl, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sasha Banks is. Oh, fine. That's your girl's <laughs> girl. Okay. I gotta be harder. I, you know, if she, if she can't stand. Why are you being so hard on the bloodline? Really... <laughs> Don't let Roman Reigns hear you talking bad about family. Yeah, no, I better okay. not do that. Okay, never mind. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Um. Back from commercial break, and Sonya Deville is in the ring with a microphone. Tells everyone she wants to only face the EST. No, wait, sorry. She tells everyone she wants to not only face the EST, but she wants to face the BEST. This could have been uh, an email or something. And Bianca is that. The crowd yells louder as she talks. They do the what chants, and it's funny that Sonya says after those chants. But the bottom line is... That Bianca mm. Belair wanted a challenger, and I gave her one. What? As she said, she she ran with it, and then she said the bottom line. Mm -hmm. This is hilarious. Uh, Bianca Belair comes out, and Sonia tells her she can't do anything to her, or she will be subject to repercussions. Like I said, this should have been an email. <laughs> Belair tells her that she's ready to have this match on Raw, but Sonia says no. Wait till next Monday in her hometown of Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. Well, she Sorry. said she was going to beat her there, right? Take her belt there. Yeah, going to beat her there because, you know, it's a hometown. It's okay, Bianca. You're the only 10 I see. Oh, I remember that one. I actually used that one time on a, oh, on a dare at a grocery store. <laughs> Didn't go well, but. Are you from Tennessee? <laughs> Nashville? Because you're the only 10 I see. God. Yeah. Uh, 2002. I guess they needed something to do in the ring. Bianca lifted her up over her shoulder and then tossed her after Sonya threatened to take the championship Put away. Me down. And then she tosses her. It's like, all right, fine, there. <laughs> <clears throat> Not even going away for Sonya to get out of the ring. Veer Mahan comes out to destroy an enhancement talent by the name of Jeff Brooks. I oh, love him. Jeff Brooks, yeah. Yeah, his name is Jeff Brooks. I remember him. Y'all got to remember their names. Um, I mean, not only that, this kid got more screen time than Dominic or any other enhancement talent before him. Uh, he yeah. got destroyed by Veer and then gets put in the ambulance when they get back from the commercial break. Meanwhile, Veer again doesn't release a half camel clutch, which doesn't look like it's painful at all. It's just not doing the whole camel clutch thing. I guess he can't do the camel clutch since Braun Breaker has it. Right, he got to do the and like homage to his uncle. Well, you know, Veer Mahan is um he's actually very famous. Yeah, he is. Have you yeah, I you've never seen the show The Deadliest Warrior? No. Oh, you you never saw that show. Well, that's not. Oh, okay. okay. Go back. We'll All right. Going. Explain. You don't know, but seriously, you don't So The Deadliest Warrior was a show on like Spike TV where they would say, "What if Alexander whoever the fuck fought uh, Attila the Hun, and then they would do like a computer simulation. Anyway, I'm saying he looks like Genghis Khan. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, go back. And <laughs> WWE back officials there. Jamie Noble and Tavari come out to get Veer to release the hold. Veer pushes Tavari out of the way to who probably has had enough and is apologizing to the old officials who he pissed off back when he was wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> you remember who he was. Managing right, Davari was with Kali, wasn't he? The great Kali and oh, uh, the guy that we don't mention the the other vacant guy that nobody was mentioned. It the guy who got huge. Um, no, come from Canada. Did he manage Benoit? No, the other guy from Canada that we don't mention. Ooh, yeah, because it was um. Because it was bad at the time. Okay, I'm I'm slow. Who's the other guy we don't mention? Mohammed Hassan. Oh right. Okay. Okay. I didn't know he was from Canada. He he said he was Italian, right? 
in real life, yeah. Yeah, yeah but he was from there also but uh, okay. he was he wasn't near anywhere saudi arabian or no whatever not, they made him right, out to not be all, no. so like he, he that was the sad now. part that was and the sad he, part well and, and then he can't find a job anymore because everybody's oh you're that guy it's like he's not even <laughs> no <laughs> it's like he's not that guy anymore this is why the is all like i am sorry for everybody who yeah. i pissed off veer come on <laughs> so yeah there's that um Backstage, Sonya wants Adam Pierce to find Bel Air. And or is it just me or there's like severe repercussions of buzzwear lately? Yeah, it sounds like maybe something Vince wrote and was very proud of. Like, okay, everybody, that's our new root. That's the new ruthless aggression. <laughs> uh, this is what I wrote in my notes also Vince McMahon telling everybody backstage yeah. severe repercussions. Yeah, I uh, can see that. You need to say like it's a new word you just learned so that the crowd can learn it also. Right. T-shirts. Say, everything. Yeah. Say it like you said stupendous for three months. Yeah. Oh, my God. Maybe that would be a pay-per-view instead of um, Cyber Monday, Cyber Sunday, whatever it was. Cyber Tuesday. Cyber Tuesday. Yeah. Welcome to, WWE, so, welcome to WWE. Welcome to WWE Severe Repercussions. Yeah. <laughs> they'll do it. If somebody hears it, they'll do it. Say it like John Cena said, ruthless aggression. <laughs> Severe repercussions. Yeah. There, I is that better? <laughs> yeah. uh, Bel Air shows up and tells her she has to pay. Not a problem, she says, and hands Adam Pierce a dollar bill. One dollar. One dollar. He's doing his job by the book. One dollar just because he had it her, over her head and then tossed her. Meanwhile, Sonia's probably going to get released of her duties because they're conducting an internal investigation of this matter with Bel Air and Sonia. Call internal affairs. Well, then she can go back to wrestling again. Oh, I guess. I don't know why she didn't... Okay. I guess. <laughs> uh, back in the ring, Kevin Owens comes out for the KO show to see if Ezekiel Ooh. is telling the truth that he is Elias' brother. <sighs> he is. Yeah. We all... You know, I was, I was really hoping that Austin had put it into that show, but... Guess not. I, it seems like the only thing KO is best at is either eating Nathan's famous hot dogs in a contest or talking. So I guess I guess they were all out of hot dogs. Damn, who has Kevin Owens in that fantasy draft? You or me? <laughs> I believe I have him, unfortunately. <laughs> Why are you so hard on your guys? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm making them tough. <laughs> making them tough. I'm like uh, Mick from Rocky. Oh, man. Gotta make them tough. <laughs> oh, this... Ezekiel comes on his way to the ring. The enhancement <laughs> talent is being taken out on a stretcher, and KO points at it and laughs. Um, back from commercial break, they made a point. You saw this guy again when they show a replay of Veer destroying this kid. Uh, okay, just remember not only remember that you have to say severe repercussions, you got to say his name also. Um, what was his name? I forgot already. See? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jeff Brooks. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, then the segment of him being wheeled in an ambulance while he's groaning in pain, everyone watching him. Who is this kid, and why are we seeing him more than we've seen other jobbers? I mean, okay. He's going to be somebody. You what? Jeff. I, I already forgot his name again. Get I just said it. Now. Jeffrey Get his Brooks. Brooks. Jeff Brooks. <laughs> um. Get his autograph now while you can. Are you sure we're going to get his autograph now? Later on, they're going to change his name. I know oh. it'll make it worth even more. Oh, it's wow. kind of like having a LeBron jersey 23 now that he's sick. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Owens in the ring and introduces Chad Gable as a genius and the one admis administering the lie detector test. Gable does that I am smart because I have glasses look and looks yeah. like the old man from Up. Ooh, wow. I, I was actually saying with his sweater that he looked like he could have been the uh, third partner on Laverne and Shirley. Oh, tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, well, and and then if that's too old a reference for some of you out there, we'll just say with his little A on his sweater, he kind of looked like Alvin and the Chipmunks with the hey, voice, too. There it is. Shush. <laughs> uh, can't believe it's come down to this. Me quoting a Gable quote. Shush. Ezekiel comes out to what sounds like No Rain by Blind Melon. They changed the song already? I thought it sounded there. I thought maybe it's just me because I don't really pay attention to him much. But yeah, when I think he, Yeah, when he first 
interrupt Kevin Owens, it, it sounded totally different than yeah, this song. Like that, something else. And this is all like a flashback, throwback to alternative 90s. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no Rain by Blind Melon. Back when MTV like, played music. Yeah, right. Hey, we're showing our age. Uh, Gable puts the straps on Zeke's arm and tests him to see if he's telling the truth. <laughs> a lie detector says yes, he is telling the truth. Yeah. Did they not see his Instagram account? No, I did. Kevin Owens does believe him. <laughs> and I believe it. I, I believe it. I know there's two. Them. I met those. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Owens does that thing again where he says he better tell the truth or else or yeah, else he's just I going wasn't. to walk away and let Chad Gable sneak attack Zeke from behind and start a match yeah which it, that's exactly what he did no you know I honestly I, I like it all I like the segment and everything but seriously at this point they need to just leave the guy alone right I mean he can't help that his brother is shy and won't accompany him to the arena I mean you know think about it Ernie Next thing you know, they're going to be telling, you're going to tell me that you didn't see two noinks at WrestleMania 9. Uh, I mean, come on. Two noinks? Ezekiel and Elias. There's two of them. Wait. Wait. There were two noinks at WrestleMania 9. Are you, are you telling me that Zeke and Elias are doinks? They just might be. Oh, wow. They just might be. They might have been the two doinks at WrestleMania 9. I'll believe it when I see it. You did. You saw it. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> Zeke, puts, like... <laughs> Zeke puts Chad Gable in this weird modified ankle lock and just he's about to tap out. Oh, this comes in there and hits Zeke from behind. The match ends in a DQ finish. Uh, Zeke wins and Otis and then Gable leave to the back, leaving Zeke by himself. We see a replay of the tag teams over the past week. Because, you know, we haven't seen enough of that. <laughs> um, I have a poll question for the audience. Go ahead. All right. So, for those of you, I mean, if you're into wrestling, you're probably into bodybuilding somewhat. So, for those of you who are into the bodybuilding community on YouTube, here's the poll question. So, obviously, we know Ezekiel is not a liar. Right, we know that. What? But, but, well, oh, we know dude. that. That's common knowledge. We yeah. know this. However, I want to know this, audience: Is Chad Gable really Greg Doucette from YouTube Bodybuilding? If you don't know who that is, it's D O U C E T T E. Listen to the voice. Look at the small stature. <laughs> Tell me. We'll air <sighs> your responses next week. Um, email us at podcast all things wrestling at gmail.com or you can just post it on the site <clears throat> yeah moving on three prophets defeated rk bro during the match the usual Great. music hits and causes rk bro to be distracted we montez yeah montez takes advantage of that and they hit riddle with the finisher for the win no sign of the usuals on the way back montez and hawkins reveal they're the ones who queued for the uso music the heat is big and looks like they could possibly be, be turning heel. Unless it's just getting them what they want and not turning but showing some aggression. That aggression is coming back, man. I don't know about you. So as far as the Street Profits, like, I'm not impressed at all. And w with the little entrance walk they were doing, it to me it kind of looked like 2006-2007 era MVP if like he was found guilty in wrestler's court and was told to walk to the ring like a buffoon. Oh... Because wow. it's like it was kind of there, but it's like, okay, like, be a caricature of yourself. Say no more, fam. <laughs> <laughs> That's my attempt at uh, young people lingo. And for those that don't know what Rustler's Court is, we have a whole episode show dedicated to that. Go check Thank it you. out. Now with ads. Now with ads. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> totally free and sponsored by Anchor. Totally free. Yeah, Anchor is really awesome, guys. So, Yeah, let's play that ad right here. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Edge and Priest promo. Edge tells AJ this side of him has always been inside of him. It's just been dormant. They were planning on him 20 years ago 
when they were planted on him 20 years ago when he was with the brood and the ministry of darkness oh he meant he's naming dropping and all that stuff he's mm-hmm. saying what he's i think he's saying he might bring back you know all these people sure he went on to say a bunch of other things too but the key word here is that priests deserve better and so did edge who had to beg for a wrestlemania match and then maybe the group name mountain of omnipotent mm, that's a lot to say uh, or you could just call it moo i'm kidding yeah. he, keep, he keeps saying other words and phrases if he's teasing us with a return uh stake through the heart gang grill is coming back oh yeah I, I did see something about that the gang grill wanted to be a part of it i can dig it yeah why not I mean, it, we all know what it is, so just go ahead. He said vampire, stake through the heart, all that stuff, and I'm like, are you teasing us something, man? Are you telling us that somebody might be making a comeback? And damn, how old is Gangrel? Jeez, he's, can he still go? Can he still fly? Well, maybe he'll be a manager. Yeah, sure. With priests. Spit the blood one time. Oh, so far, it's Mountain of Omnipotent, um, the jury... Punishment, all that other stuff. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Edge versus AJ Styles at Backlash. So, not only Backlash, it's WrestleMania Backlash. Like, we have two WrestleMania titles in the year. No, no, that's weird. Um, Austin Theory defeated Finn Balor for the U.S. Championship. Yeah, and just in case you didn't know what that felt, stood for they made sure to put the word champion really big on it. they did <laughs> good lord like what's that belt for is he a, a chef is he a car mechanic no he's a champion oh okay yeah i swear to god uh stevie wonder could read that like, Damn. it's cute <laughs> but, you know. Austin. Th- oh, no, I'm sorry. Not Austin Theory. Just regular Theory. Oh, they changed his name, too? Well, yeah, they you know, did. I did. I did say that last week. They you did tell. And, and it, it's good. It's not only a name. It's a description. Because in theory, he's a superstar. In theory. And I like theory, what you did though. there. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. Anyway. So for winning that match, that belt, that title, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Austin Theory gets... Title. Yeah, that championship title. Austin Theory gets the extra 10 points. Yeah. yeah. And thus becoming my number one guy now. Really? Him? He's your number one. Oh, crap. All right. I'll live with it. <laughs> Back from commercial break, and AJ Star- Styles is there starting a promo. That promo doesn't count. The lights okay. flicker blue and gets attacked by Edge and Priest. Wait, did it count? Did I make it count? I mean, why, got... why wouldn't it count? Uh, 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 oh, he's your guy. Yeah, the, he does. It does count. Did it count? Did you make it count? I. I mean, what? I yeah, I thought so. I mean, it okay. is a uh. from okay. Like I don't know. I didn't make some people count for mine. I was like, eh. He just showed we'll up. He just showed I mean, up. If, if it's too short or anything, like, does it have to be a certain amount of time? Whatever. If you think it was worth the time, like, more than a minute, then go ahead. But it's like, yeah, I, we'll it I know somebody did it did one with my people, and I'm just like, nah, that doesn't count. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll after this, we'll figure out okay. the parameter. I do uh, want to say, though, before we move on to the backstage, that my opinion on being a fan of both uh, Valor and Theory, which I'm not of either, but that aside, I will say that the physicality and the wrestling between the two was like edge of your seat, fast paced, and I quite frankly impressive. And I'm I'm a fan of neither. So. Yeah, I thought it was a fun, good match to watch. I guess I should have watched it. I didn't watch the whole thing. I just like, oh shoot, theory yeah, one. I gotta one. skim through it now. I didn't want to see it. <laughs> like, damn yeah, it. It was good. You would if you watch it, you'll enjoy it. But like, it's an actual, you know, for the wrestling itself. I thought it was a good. Um. Okay, so is this a new thing now where somebody comes out to have a match and waits for their opponent, but lo and behold, there's a promo backstage before your match starts? Of course. Or the opponent comes out? That's a new thing. Like, 
it just <laughs> what what am I watching? But dude is in the ring waiting. Why are you having promos now? And then they and then they do a recap of Vince McMahon grooming theory. Yeah. Maybe I yeah. shouldn't have said grooming. I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah, especially after last week's show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if there was ever a guy I really wanted to get released, but not bad for bad reasons, but for good reasons alone, it'd be Finn Balor. Mm. Just release him already. Let him go his way. New Japan take over the Bullet Club once again and go to AW or ROH. Yeah, because I honestly forgot he was still around. It was like he wasn't at WrestleMania. Why even bother? Right. Actually, work instead of enhancing other people like he's doing here. I honestly hadn't really been aware of him since. He, well, he got hurt, right? When he used to do that paint, was he like Venom or something? What was he supposed to be? With like he made it look like a big mouth on his neck or something? Carnage or Venom? Carnage. Okay, one yeah, Carnage. Probably. Hey, one of those. And then didn't he get legitimately hurt, or was it not legit when he gave up? Hey, he legit hurt. Okay. Yeah, something neck, right? Something with his neck or something like something. that. Something with his shoulder. I forgot. Shoulder, okay. Like, I stopped watching him for a while. Like, they're not doing anything with him. Like, all well, right. And, and what was bad, if I recall, was a while ago, didn't he, like, win the belt the night before and, like, that's when he got hurt? Like, I think yeah, he literally the, won the belt. The um, Universal Championship? Yeah. He it was like beat a, yeah, like... Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins gave him a power bomb onto the guardrail, the okay. padded guardrail, and hurt his shoulder. The yeah. next night, he had to release the belt give up the belt yeah because people were like he finally got the damn belt and now <laughs> yeah okay. and ever since then they're just like no we're not pushing the button on him no. up until so he had to go back to nxt and all this hey it was so i mean release the guy like you have no plans for him right if you're not going to use him let him go somewhere where he can be acknowledged right yeah <laughs> Speaking of acknowledged, yeah, so AJ Styles got attacked in the backstage by the min- the Moo. I mean, uh, the mountain of omnipotent. Right, I like Moo better. <laughs> Moo. So, like, but in this though, is this like a case of the student becoming the teacher? Because this is basically the ministry, but now instead it's the Brood. It's Edge in charge of the ministry. Yeah, he did say something uh, like that, um, where he said that um, he knew a. He he was taught this during the brood and the ministry of darkness. Okay. So now he's um, teaching it onto uh, Damien Priest and Damien soon Pitton. Rhea Ripley, yeah. if not Which somebody they could else. Be twins. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> now let me ask you this: If Theory, think about this one now. If Theory joins them, right, his ties to Vince, could we see maybe another corporate ministry? Oh God! It was <laughs> me, Austin. <laughs> It was me all along. Vince really does look like the Crypt Keeper now. <laughs> We're going to lose our sponsorship. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, one and all. <laughs> no. Um, where was I? After the match, Theory is being treated like he's a big hero when the heels in right. the locker room that aren't doing anything come out to lift Theory on their shoulder. Yeah. Um, Daddy Vince yeah. comes out and Theory tells his boys playtime is over. Yeah. He's serious now. <laughs> he has to go see Grandpa <laughs> who is proud of his boy <laughs> and take a selfie together. Yeah. Look at Vince adapting to Gen Z. Yeah, he's right. He's such... He, the, the, the man is timeless. <laughs> um... My favorite part of the night, double wedding time. <laughs> Why is this your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> Anything our truth does is just hilarious. Okay. Uh, okay. It's just with a bunch of random people on both sides. It's like, I don't even know who these people are. Um, Nikki Ash on Tamina's side and Los Otarios and Dana on Dana Brooke's side. I'm sorry, Brooke. Dana Brooke. Yeah, um, Sasha Banks and Naomi holding Tamina's wedding gown. Also, a throwback to them being Team Bad. <laughs> the what chance had me dead. Oh. I, you, uh, like you say, you called it. As soon as Stone Cold came, I said, okay, this is probably going like to deal with this till next WrestleMania. Yeah, we're going to. And now that he wants to wrestle next WrestleMania, also, Again, like, I damn, know. dude, damn. No, that's not newsworthy. Go away. <laughs> Please get the F out again. 
Uh, truth finally gets to the are there any objections part, and I wasn't expecting anything bad to happen, but I laughed too hard at Tamina switching Dozawa and Reggie. And then Tamina switches places with Dozawa, and the crowd popped louder. <laughs> truth says, y'all gonna get me fired. <laughs> I don't even know if that's PG. <laughs> no, it's like, yes, do it. No, she's not gonna do it. Tamina once again switches places with Reggie, and it goes back to normal. They get committed. Reggie smooches Dana to the floor. A ref shows up that I didn't even know where he came from, and counts to three. It was the ball that it was. It was yeah. <laughs> oh hey, had to put you, that in there. Got to put that in there. Listen to us every week. Reggie's the new 24-7 champion. Reggie tries to celebrate, but Tamina kicks Reggie in the face and pins him. Tamina's the new 24-7 champion. Tozawa gets underneath Tamina's wedding dress and does a schoolboy on her for the three count. Tozawa's the new 24-7 champion. Uh, Dana Brooke gets on the top rope and crossbody blocks Tozawa for a pin in the three count. Dana Brooke is the new 24-7 champion. So we have a lot of negatives and a lot of champion, not a lot of ten points in this match, in this segment. Yeah, there was a whole lot to keep up with. It, it reminded me of back in the day, though, when uh, the hardcore Crash Holly. Yeah, yeah. It's like I said, this is I the, it was my favorite part. It's not. Yeah, it's not my. True. What's not my favorite? What's not my favorite part is when everybody has to go chase for the twenty four seven championship, and you right. see a bunch of random wrestlers show up. Like and that was funny though. Sometimes, like you'd see somebody coming up. I forgot who came in the golf cart. But like EC3 did it once, and he had a freaking cup of red solo cup, whatever it was in there, and looked bored as hell. Like I'm getting paid for this. <laughs> Act like you've been there before. By the hour. It's like yeah, sure. Release me. Yay. No. Okay. I'm here, guys. Yeah. He really didn't want to be there. <laughs> uh, come back from commercial break. We got promos from Bobby Lashley and MVP with Amos. Next Monday, they're having an arm wrestling match. Because why not? Right? Why not? What good is a monster versus monster match if you're not going to have an arm wrestling match in between? Exactly. They could do a uh, bench press like Triple H. Triple H with Scott Steiner back in the day. Or a push up. A push up. <laughs> or um, a post- no, we don't want to see them do a post up. No, not those. No. Uh, but it still reminded me of Mark Henry versus Braun Strowman. Uh, Braun Strowman versus, or Mark Henry versus anybody else in an arm wrestling match. Like, are you guys doing the whole over the top thing? Remember that movie? Oh, of course. It must be one of my favorite movies. Over the top was an arm wrestling movie. Yeah, that's right. With a guy so, called Sylvester Stallone. With a when guy he called wasn't ninety. Oh my god! And just every arm wrestling match, I swear his jaw kept dropping to the floor. <laughs> like that thing was. Oh, it was like, damn, dude! <laughs> How far can your jaw move like that? That's where he got his power from. Uh, hook to the jaw. <laughs> um, right. It was his leverage. Uh, so we got Cody Rhodes defeated Kevin Owens via count out. Yeah. Rollins and his partnership with Kevin Owens could be ending. Rollins kept yelling at Owens to get back in the ring or he's going to get counted out. Kevin had enough of told Rollins to deal with his own problems as he walks away and loses the match via count out. Cody Rhodes celebrates on the top row, but he's attacked by Rollins as the show goes off the air. That was your main event, guys. Great. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, they can't all be wondering. I think they should have ended with the, the funny segment with the um, 24-7. But <laughs> what? Just, <laughs> I, it was better than that. Uh, better than that count out. I, no? It was. Anything but I'm sure it's going to lead that. to something, I guess. Something special. Over on NXT, show opens with Pretty Deadly promo with the Tag Team Championship titles. 
They claimed they were the top team in the UK, and they came to the States and beat four other teams in one match. Yay. Now they're here. As they celebrate, they are interrupted by grizzled young veterans who are going by their names instead of the graphics showing their tag team names. Budget cuts are coming, guys. Gotta cut the guys that doesn't do much anymore. Hey. I have no problem with that. Graphic designer, you're fired. <laughs> Gibson asks why they would why weren't they invited to attack in Gauntlet? Drake tells Pretty Deadly the only reason they were successful in the UK is because they decided to leave, and the only reason they weren't attacking gold is because GYB wasn't involved in the Gauntlet. Mm. Uh, Legado del Fantasma and Senorita Tiquita Electra Lopez distracts the guys and then Hex Joaquin and Del Toro attack GYB and Pretty Deadly. Uh, Braun Breaker comes out during the commotion and asks where Gacy's hiding, who does this strobe light thing with his face on the Titantron. The show starts with a messy chaos. Then again, that's how every good show starts with a mess, with a chaotic mess. That's true. Yeah. The more chaotic, the better. <laughs> um. First match of the night, Tiffany Stratton, your girl Tiffany Stratton, defeated yeah. Saray. I love how Vic Joseph goes in on Wade Barrett doing the commentary. Vic tells Barrett, you're like a goldfish. I'm trying to talk to you about Joe Gacy and Braun Breaker, and all of a sudden you're looking at Tiffany Stratton. <laughs> and Wade doesn't even acknowledge him. He's like, huh? What? Huh? Yeah, hey, look, staring at this girl. And respectfully, of course. Oh, yeah, no. Shout, <laughs> shout out to those two fans yelling for Saray. <laughs> two fans. Well, so, you know, and she well, paid a lot of money to have her parents come and visit. Let's go, Saray. Let's go, Stratton. Let's go, Saray. Let's go, Stratton. Nobody joined in. No. It was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it was they, I think it seemed like the audience just wanted to see them go. Like, let's go to the back and let's get somebody else out here. Let's end the match quick. Let's let's go home. <laughs> um, really annoyed everyone in the crowd though, because they're just like telling him shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the double stomp on Stratton from Zaray looked painful, and your girl needs to learn how to sell moves because she just hit yeah, it did. the cane gimmick I and not selling it. <laughs> I thought you were gonna bring that up. It's, yeah, she. It's almost like she forgot, like, oh, she, yeah, right. I'm supposed to react to that. It was like, damn, <laughs> made Saray look weak. Weak, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you hit me with that. Okay, let me stand up. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> she basically she basically pulled a Bruiser Brody versus Lex Luger. Wow. Oh, <laughs> man. What? You hit me with the clothesline? What? You hit me with your steel plate arm? Yeah, it didn't even affect him. It doesn't affect me. Doesn't affect uh, big barbarian like guys. <laughs> oh god! Stratton hits the corkscrew flip from the top rope and wins the match. Uh, she, I mean, that. she's out. Uh, she's freaking amazing. I loved her. Like I love her moves and everything. But damn it, sell it, <laughs> sell the fucking move. <laughs> she got up. Kane, is that Kane? Is that Kane? New girl. What the hell? Like. So Ray hit her with a big move, and then she's uh outside the ring, and then she gets up. Like, dude, not even uh, I don't even want to say her name, but I have to. Thanks. Not even Eva Marie would do that. <laughs> Son of a fish! That's the last time you'll ever hear that name. Yeah. Please, I, oh wow! I you know what? I I think we just lost like ten listeners. And so I, I apologize. I'll take that back. Eva Marie did that once, and. We yeah, just lost was... another 10. Son of a fish. You keep saying the name. All right. The redheaded stepchild girl that we never talk about anymore. Okay. All right. Happy? Okay. All right. Cool. Well. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Grizzled young veterans are seen walking backstage, and Braun Breaker walks past them looking for Joe Gacy. Yeah, Gacy isn't in the same room, guy. GYB start yelling at him, and he tells him to shut up because he hears voices. So does Randy Orton. Oh, yeah. I was going to say. He walks towards the voice into a room in a cage, and the audio from when his father Rick Steiner was kidnapped. 
So you're telling me Breaker didn't save his father after all, and that cage was backstage this entire time for two weeks? He, he just didn't go in that room. Is this what we're there insinuating here? It, what, what happened was there was caution tape on it, and he liked to follow the rules. Oh, he followed the rules. Yeah. As long as he... he <sighs> There's a math joke in here somewhere. There probably is, but <laughs> I'm not good at math, so I'll let you tell. Oh, 33.3% of a chance that he could have gone into that room. <laughs> oh. That's like a quarter. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that Oh, funny. shit. <laughs> uh, backstage segment with Pretty Deadly meeting up with Persia Parada. Parada? Parada. Per- and yeah. Indy Hartwell. Parada and Hartwell tell the new tag team champions they would like to team up and Pretty Deadly make it seem like they're flirting. So they flirt back and tell them, sure. And laugh it off, but get serious when Dexter Loomis and Duke Hudson appear on the screen. Pretty deadly back away real slowly. Look. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> well, just keep going, because they just like, what are you guys doing with them? What the hell, man? You made it? You're making it seem like Okay. Grayson Waller in a backstage interview apparently fired Sanga Sanga? And is in a match against him later. Those budget cuts. <laughs> I, as Sanga is dressed like someone familiar. I just can't pinpoint who. Yeah, it's very... Yeah, it's, it's, it's... Uh, Sanga does look strong, man. He does. He like... <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Like said budget cuts, they had to do hand me down. Oh shit! <laughs> hand me down gimmicks. Hand me down everything. Hey, you want this gimmick that we no longer have that you could have? Like, sure. All you gotta do is wear these boots and this black shirt and look like and these that's and just painters' pants or whatever they are. Damn, that's <laughs> strong guy over there. He, he, well, he's, he's rem- so do you remember the Charlie Brown cartoons where like they would have all the characters and it was basically just either Charlie Brown with like a ponytail or like Charlie Brown with brown skin like even yeah. the black characters were basically just Charlie Brown so it's kind of oh. like that they're just my god yeah <laughs> he's, he's the uh he's the this is the woke bronze drum. oh Sangha <laughs> I can see Sangha like instead of the other guys Veer and the other guy on SmackDown, I could see Sangha getting the treatment, this, this treatment, but not the other guys. Yeah. Um, and I thought they were all one person one time. <laughs> it's like, like wh- why is Sangha in on Raw, SmackDown, right, and NXT? Well, maybe we're gonna find out he has brothers too, like Ezekiel. Oh, they're all the we're same person. Out. No, they're brothers. So maybe they won't release Sangha at all and actually make him look like a monster since he seems more likable than Veer. He does. That's true. Yeah. He. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Veer, you know what Veer looks like? He reminds me of if they took Great Collie and crossbred him with the Head Shrinker. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's my take. Uh, it was a long. It was a great run, guys. It really was. <laughs> Thank you for listening to these past 24 episodes. Yeah, really we... appreciate it. <laughs> you guys are the MVPs here. <laughs> <laughs> Wall... Not the Street Profit version, the good version of MVP. <laughs> Waller hits his finisher, which looks like an RKO and a stunner, and wins the match. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere with that one. He like goes out, runs outside of the ring, Jumps inside, does this little RVD thing where he rolls into the ring and then does the like something you would do as a kid when on a couch, mm-hmm. like yeah. trying to practice wrestling move. It's like, all right, I'm gonna go over here, and then I'm gonna go over here, and then uh, RKO, yeah. It's like what? Ten <laughs> year old me was like, oh my god, you just lived my dream. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, this whole couch thing, it reminds me of when I did it and jumped off and hit my hurt my elbow on a wrestle buddy. Oh see, no, well I would do what I would do is I would take the cushions off the couch. Oh put shit. those on the floor and then jump off the arm of the couch onto the cushion. 
I I thought the wrestling buddy would. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. No. no, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to be Hogan and uh, Ultimate Warrior, but that didn't happen. No. Yeah. Next time, put the cook. If you ever do that again in the future, put the cookies <laughs> down. <laughs> Me at forty. Oh. oh. Okay. No, still Rick, hurts. Rick Flair's doing it. Um. Yeah. <laughs> you saw him in his video, I'm sure. Jay Online. Lethal did it. Jay Lethal did it also. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, a recap of last week between Natalia and Cora Jade plus a promo from her. Um, yeah, was, whatever. Looks like we're probably not gonna getting a John the Bull entry into the Italian stable with Tony D'Angelo. Can't have two wrestlers with the last name the Bull in the same company. No. No. Johnny the Bull or Rodriguez del Toro. What? I forgot his name. <laughs> Segment you, promo with oh, the form. Well, go ahead. You're not talking about Brooks again, are you? Brooks. Who? Who? Are, you said who? Whose name did you forget? The Bull. Oh, yeah, Sam. Oh, maybe that was the real guy. Was it Johnny the Bull? Because I think Sammy, the Bull, Sam. is the real mafia guy. Oh no, can't. Yeah, no, we, no, 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 I think it's. I don't remember, but I, it's not Sammy. No, that's the real guy. <laughs> Gonna edit that one out. Yeah, we. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Segment promo with the former Roxy, who is now going by Roxanne Perez, who does this little promo of how when she was a little girl, she used to play WWE games to escape her chaotic oh. household and even going as far as to use the creator wrestler feature and put herself in the game, which made her dr- realize her dream of becoming a pro wrestler. Haven't we all done that? You know, Relatable. <laughs> yes. Well, and I was going to say, you know, I was never good at that, though. Every time I would make myself on Nintendo 64, I just ended up becoming Date Ken. Please tell she, me you remember Date Ken. Who? Date Ken. Oh, my God. Seriously, you could take this out, but you have to look at it. I can't believe you never used to play, um, what was it, WCW versus NWO? Yeah. Whatever. Date Ken, the guy that would have the like sweatband on his head. He was like a generic. It wasn't a real wrestler. He was like a generic. It was a long time ago. Oh my god! <laughs> Me and my friend um, used to always like that was like we would pretend like, like oh no, it's Date Ken. Like we would pretend like he was the best guy because he was so generic. Yeah, seriously, you take all this out, but yeah, no, I'm D- not. Type him up now. Type him up D- now. D A D A K E, and I'm sure it's Japanese. It's probably like no, it's Dake. Whatever. D A K E, and then Ken. Oh, oh, that guy. Damn. Jeez, with like the sweat to the oldies outfit on. <laughs> yeah, that was the end of the revenge. The revenge, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was all those other guys, like the one guy that was basically the prototype for Lord Tensai, the guy oh, with all the tattoos on his face. Louise, yeah. <laughs> See, I was playing the other one, the uh, World Tour. Oh yeah, that was PlayStation. Was that PlayStation? Yeah, no, uh, Nintendo sixty four. Oh, was it? Okay. Or I was it was It was one of those. It was one of those. But yeah, <laughs> we left it because with the he had the, the belly shirt, the pink pants, and then the headband. Oh my! <laughs> you can't. Beat Ken. You can't. This is hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, Ming, relatable. Ming Chi, yeah. Anyway. yeah, there it goes. Uh, <laughs> Relatable. She is all of us gamers who did the exact same thing when those games came out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember doing that. Um, making my own wrestlers and then making myself. And then over the years, like, all right, I'm done. I can't be doing this every year. Yeah, it takes <laughs> forever. And then they give you so many. It's like, don't give me so many options because then it takes me like three, four hours to make my guy. And I'm like, okay, well, it's already it night. I'm it's sorry. already night time. <laughs> It's already nighttime and you're going to bed. It's like, what the hell did I do all day? Like, I didn't even play. It's three I didn't even now. play. <laughs> play. Like, what the hell was I doing the past three hours? Oh, yeah, that you know. New game has the new one has a lot of options. We like, how do we go from thirty wrestling moves to like hundred and sixty to freaking a thousand moves now? Well, and now you can do layers of like tattoo. I mean, you could do it for a while, but just the layers and stuff. Like, you can seriously. Um, if you have the time and the patience and the 
so basically you're playing Imagine. your your um your, your general manager game like two weeks from now yeah, <laughs> is that yeah, what right. like all right yeah. let's start this no i got to do my guy first you this can, is a, probably the reason why i started doing uploading people from the community because like no i'm not i don't want to spend my time doing this i'll just upload yeah. people from there um yeah, yeah. All these old, all these old wrestlers that used to be there, start downloading CM Punk and right, uh, 2K 13, 14, 15, and 16. It's like he's no longer here, but let me upload him. Yeah, a lot. Let somebody else do the work. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, of course, they're going to show John Cena, Undertaker, and Sheamus. Basically, those are still in good standing with the company. Had that been me, it would have been CM Punk and some creative wrestler upload from the community department. Yeah, see? All right. That's my go-to nowadays. Roxanne Perez does a little promo and then gets interrupted by toxic, uh, toxic attraction of Mandy Rose and her girls. They tell her, why don't you debut tonight in a match against one of them? Uh, during this, both Wild and Del Toro were waiting for their opponents in the ring. I totally forgot about Legado de Fantasma in the ring. Like, oh, cool. A promo. Oh, cool. It's like an ad for W2K22. Oh, cool. Another promo. Oh, wait. There's a match? <laughs> yeah, they did slip a match. They happened to slip a match. Finally, GYB show up, and we get right to the action of a suicide dive or maybe a corkscrew trope. Do they still call it a suicide dive? I don't know. I haven't Do they? It. Do they still call it a suicide? Did Vince take it out of the word lingo? Like, you can't say suicide anymore, dude. Okay. I swear if they give Del Toro a stupid-ass bullfighter Matador 2.0 gimmick, that's it. I'm done. And someone in the crowd starts yelling, Ole. Well, I was going to say he needs to have a manager. Uh, I know just the guy. His name is Armando Alejandro Estrada. <laughs> Throwback. Why? Why not the original guy? Tito. Yeah. yeah. Tito Santana. He could use. <sighs> That's not my favorite. Man. That's your favorite guy. I know it is. Oh. Enhancement talent for every WrestleMania. <laughs> sure. Um, it was a pretty solid tag team match, but Legacy of the Ghost wins, and they celebrate in the ring, but not for too long. Santos grabs the mic and asks for Carmelo Hayes to get in the ring with him. <sighs> Again, this whole, hey, I'm going to wait in the ring while you do an interview. <laughs> Back from commercial break, and Wes Lee is being interviewed. Wasn't expecting that since he re- the release of his legendary tag team partner, Vacant. Yeah. yeah um, oh, oh, yeah. That guy. Zion Quinn interrupts the pity promo and tells him to get in the ring with him. Sure. Uh, Back in the ring, Carmelo Hayes walks out for the match. Shit. This match. These two are the future of NXT unless they leave and go to the main roster. But ever since the black and gold brown guys left, they have had to rely on these two to keep the company consistent. Yeah, it was a good... I mean, they're... like, Like the gimmicks or not, I mean, the guys can definitely... Put on a good show. Yeah, they can. Uh, was it just me or were they yelling whoop that trick from the Hustle and Flow movie? Were they actually saying that? I was <laughs> whoop I didn't... that trick. Whoop that oh. trick. <laughs> I was like thinking, me being old, I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. Because of Trick Williams, of course, but come on. They, it... I wonder if they, yeah, but I wonder yeah. if they were, huh. Uh, this just in Trick Williams and Nago by Williams. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably better. <laughs> it's like we can't have people in the crowd saying trick and double meaning. Yeah, again, what we a... had an episode about it. Sword. <laughs> Match codes to commercial break and we get the action on picture in picture. So it's just mostly wrestling hold moves. Outside, Trick Williams is acting like Damian Sandow when he was the stunt double for The Miz. Why do you keep bringing that name up? Sandow? Yeah. Why not? Did you Legend. like him? Legendary. He was a stunt double. Remember that? Yeah, but did you... So I'm saying, but did you... Were you actually a fan? 
I was a fan of Damien Sandow, Sandow as a stunt double, yeah. Okay, but okay, but not the Rose Scholar. That's what I mean. Like, so you okay? But did you like him yeah, as a wrestling I, gimmick? Like, well, yeah, it was a wrestling gimmick. It was fine. When as soon as he went okay. to um, Impact TNA, like, eh, all right, I'll stop watching. He's not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Aaron, yeah, what was his name? Aaron history. Stevens. Yeah, the idol Aaron Stevens. I didn't pay attention. I really didn't pay attention to him when he was at WWE. So I definitely, mm. I have no idea. Yeah, I did. He went there, and then he crossed with Cody Rhodes when he left too, and they gave each other that look like, "Hey, what's up? Okay. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna go that way. Okay, cool. Bye." <laughs> like I, I know you from somewhere. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Did you see the um which and I, I'm just seeing this now. So I'm not trying to sound like I knew this from before. Apparently there's also a uh, a theory that uh Sandow is Elias. And they do kind of look alike. Shit, they are. They do they look, do alike. look alike. Oh my god. That's funny. <laughs> yes, it is. Now now you know what? What if they bring him back? Like for just, uh, just one time, yeah, to say the Ezekiel and the Elias. What if because if you put back, them together, they do look alike. What if it is Sandow in the picture? If it actually is him, like <laughs> now that'd be even funnier. Like okay, I'm not, I'm neither. I'm not Ezekiel or Elias. I'm Sandow. And they bring back Sandow with the full beard. Dang, that does look like it. yeah. With well, it's got to be with the beard. Oh well, right. The or, beard or or or. Our third brother. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, they, you guys, look, okay? He yeah, it does look like it. hilarious. It's hilarious. Damien oh Sandow and Ezekiel look like each other. That's freaking. I hilarious. wonder if they would without the beard. See, it's, they might have to keep the beard. They're brothers. <laughs> don't finish it. Don't I'm finish not. <laughs> Welcome to 2022. Can't finish that. Yeah. No. <laughs> um. Whenever Melo does his basketball score flex, I just want to say ball in. Yeah. Like MVP used one. to do. <laughs> Imagine those two meeting each other on the main roster. I could see that. Well, but now, see, MVP obviously is not going to be able to keep up now. Um, yeah, now. Freaking Melo yeah, was were. like, shit, dude. Melo is like, he doesn't miss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of course he doesn't miss. But MVP versus Melo would be like a whole a legend cool, versus though. new school guy. Right. Like he should be his manager or something at first. Yes. Not Omaz. Like, yeah. yeah. Forget him. Not Trick. Trick would be like, why are you here? Yeah. Um, these two have such awesome chemistry and I can't wait to see them fight again and probably on the main roster or an event, main event type of match. Santos dives into Melo to the outside, throws him in, and flexes for the crowd as he stands there. Two unknown men in business suits show up to the left and right of Escobar. He stares at both of them, and the one on the right gets his attention, but the one on the left jumps from the guardrail and hits Escobar's leg with a crowbar. Yeah, this is some mafia work, ain't it? Yeah. They throw him... Nancy Kerrigan. Oh, boy. They throw him back in the ring, and Carmelo does a leg drop from the top rope for the pin and wins the match. Carmelo Hayes grabs the mic and calls out Cameron Grimes for a match for the North American Championship in two weeks at Spring Breakin at Electric Boogaloo. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't, not the one who called it Spring Breakin. It's like, come on, dude. You were <laughs> bound to get a bunch of memes from this, and I can't wait to be the one that does it. Spring Breakin. Cameron Grum comes out to accept and says he is not the only one looking for Melo. Solo Sokoa sneaks into the ring and Bloodline super kicks Trick to the face and Family Samoan drops Melo. Grimes and Solo stare at each other as a sign of respect and walk out. Yeah. Yeah, I like to see. Uh, <laughs> you're like, this is, you say that as you write down the points. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, backstage <laughs> segment with Breaker still looking for Gacy. He walks inside a room full of mirrors and see Gacy's face smiling back at him. Um, 
the more of a room full of bad luck for Breaker since he broke the mirrors. Enter the dragon star. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> uh, back from the commercial break, and we see the leader of Diamond Mine, Malcolm Vivens, talking on the phone while an enhancement talent is doing his training. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's Roderick Strong. My mistake. Well, hey, you know. Roddy tells Malcolm he's the leader and he refuses to let another group crumble. So it's agreed then that Roddy was the weak link in the Undisputed Era, right? Yeah, I think that's what we're I think that's what we're getting at. Damn, I'm going hard on him. He's not even my guy either. <laughs> for a reason. Mean, for no reason. <laughs> he says he is going to make an example of the people from now on. Should have done that a while back. Yeah. <laughs> but hey. I'm going to make an example of yeah, people now. Now? Really? Now? You've been losing all your matches, buddy. <laughs> Should have done that already. Should have done that. It helped your teams out, you know? Hey, I'm serious this time. I'm serious. Yeah, now. <laughs> as long as Marina I'm Shafir... As long as my wife is getting matches and winning... I'm like, no. <laughs> oh. Damn it. <laughs> I guess I got to uh, step up again. Yeah, I, got, I can't be the one not bringing home the the bacon. Uh, your girls, Natalia defeated Tatum Paxley. I know both of them. Jeez, so I like won and lost. <laughs> you won and lost. Uh, Natalia looks extremely good at forty years old, and I love that she's here because the women's division definitely needs some help. Yeah, um, she kinda, she's starting to look more like a, and I'm a, a fan, so this is she kind of. With her, you know, the long hair and all the other things she's doing with herself. Kind of looks like maybe the wrestling version of uh, Mariah Carey now. Oh, boy. That's that a good, good thing? though. I like that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I mean, Mandy Rose is doing a great job as a heel, but she's helping the other two members of Toxic Attraction mostly. And you just can't rely on one good heel. No. So Natalia's like the veteran of the group here to not only help the division, but to make them better. Uh, I didn't even know Tatum was. I didn't even know who Tatum was before this match happened. Uh, I only knew uh, maybe a week ago because of the promos or whatever. Right. Like, oh, yeah. okay, cool. Natalia wins via submission. That sharpshooter never looked so good. <laughs> that she gets out of the ring and stands next to one of the fans that's been yelling at her, and she just laughs it off. Uh, which reminded me of so much of that one time John Cena goes out to the crowd and is hanging oh, out with the sign. dude. Is hanging out with the dude with the shirt. We hate oh, John Cena. That's what it was. Okay. And he's just like, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. You want a picture? And the uh, guy is just like crossing his arms. Nah, I'm good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but you still paid for front row seats to see me. So. Right. You're here because of me. Right. Oh, my God. Outside, Tony D'Angelo gets asked if he has something to do with the crowbar incident on Santos Escobar. The Don does his Italian mafia best to avoid the question and denies he has something to do with it. He looks at the car he is next to and it's revealed it's Legado's car. Of course it is. No. Um, backstage segment with Duke Hudson, Dexter Loomis, and Indy Artwell. Duke is trying to go with a game plan with Dexter and tells them what they need to do. Dexter remain expressionless, and Indy tells Duke what Dexter likes and doesn't like. Duke yells, how do you know? His expression hasn't even changed. It never will. Oh, Freaking. Man. Oh, Dexter is like <laughs> the only gimmick that I'll never get tired of. Like, can you please do? No? Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. Just stand there. Okay. You're gonna lose this match? Okay, yeah, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, you lose. Yeah, that's fine if you lose this match. You're a big guy, but hey, <laughs> like, I get you're losing your matches. I'm not mad. You go and do what you gotta do. Uh, what was that? No, I'm. Just, yeah, I mean, he's. I think it, it'll. They can turn it into something good. We'll just see how they do it. It can go over, or it can be one of those things where it's like, okay, like uh, there was another guy they had that didn't change expressions. Was I think his name was Festa? Oh fuck! No. <laughs> Wait, unless you rang the bell. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not sure ringing the bell. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I mean, wasn't he Jesse's good brother? Yeah, but right, the brother or whatever, and he was his best brother. I wonder if he joined a, a society yeah. later on. I what, remind Straight Edge Society. Oh, oh yeah, he did join the. Um, oh my God, we have to talk about that one. I forgot oh. about that with the the woman that cut her hair, Serena Deeb, who is now in AEW. Oh wow! Like totally different. Like when she used to look back then, she's now like a yoga, um, yogi girl. Yeah, totally different storyline, gimmick, and everything. <laughs> um, Zion Quinn defeated Wes Lee. Damn, dude. It's like mm, you're like 15 minutes away from changing your name. They're gonna do it. They're gonna change his name. If not, he's 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 one of those. Yeah, we gotta release you, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm you're only sure good. With your, you're only good with your tag team partner. Yeah, they will. I mean, it, it, it's funny that you say it, but you know they're going to. Like, they, going. He, he's staying because of pity, pretty much. Well, either that or he's just... Let's see what you have. got a few few months left on his contract. <laughs> yeah, right. It was a good match. Wes just seems forgettable and probably lose himself in the shuffle of things now that he's no longer in the tag team. Hopefully I'm wrong and this changes and they allow him to do something better. Or... Can we get somebody else from Impact, like one of his friends from the Rascals, to come up? Or they can uh, Trey keep, him camo- keep him in his camouflage and make him a Dudley boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> they could, <laughs> though, right? They could bring back, if not one of the bigger guys, maybe bring back uh, Spike. He can be his Dare coach. Dare you. <laughs> coach. coach Spike. Yeah. Um, backstage segment with Natalia, which gets interrupted by the Thickness Queen. Nikita Lyons, who, by the way, just decided to follow her on Twitter and Instagram, and mm, yeah. Anyway, who decides to yell at Natalia? Why was she yelling? We all heard her. Why was she yelling? Seeing Natalia's face, like, bitch, why the fuck are you yelling at me? I'm in front of you. (laughs) Even the girl behind her was like, okay. Like, why didn't you have this kind, of, this type of energy with Lush Legend? Why are you yelling at Natalia? <laughs> well, Poor Natalia. You know, what she, I think she had gotten some uh, samples of Zoa before her uh, promo. And Zoa energy, energy, zero sugar, vitamin C, B vitamins, mana. I, I didn't realize how many of these I drank because they taste so good. You just drink them and you don't realize. Oh, right, they're energy drinks. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, Natalia tells her she's going to put her in the sharpshooter and Akita tells her, don't worry. I'm flexible. Oh, my oh, God. Amazing. Yeah, we just about killed every man <laughs> listening to that promo. Um, I'm sure the memes are going to come out as soon as it happens. Um, the, men's, uh, the men's internet wrestling community haven't used a good flexibility meme since Melina and, well... Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, you know how that goes. Batista I... knows how that goes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, um, are we comparing Melina to Sunny? Oh. Oh, my I... God. Oh. No. Okay. Bret Hart? No, that... anyway. Uh, Bret Hart <laughs> and Batista know a thing or two about. <laughs> oh, my God. Sure do. Uh, girls, if you do love Melina, we apologize for that remark. We love Melina here. It's just, we do. You know, we didn't like the way she presented herself with the whole Trish Stratus um, Snooky thing. Oh, That's God, all. The Snooky mask. Yeah. And the whole getting kicked out of the locker room by Lita. <laughs> like, she did some horrible things, man. Sorry, you know. Keep, keep keep listening to us, though. We do no love Melina. Perfect. Just, you know, no one's perfect. We appreciate her and the way she... Yeah, okay. Flexibility is yeah. all I'm saying. Back on top. <laughs> like, hey, I was one of those guys that freaking popped when... Well, I shouldn't have said that word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. Marked out when she came out of the Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah. 
the 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 well, not, the, not divas anymore, but yeah, yeah, she's the whole diva generation uh, behind us. But okay, um, Roxanne Perez, Roxy defeated J.C. Jane. Um, Wendy too continues to distract Toxic Attraction. Yet those girls haven't done anything back. Maybe if they ignore her long enough, she'll go away. It distracted Jane enough for Roxy to hit a sunflip flip for the win. Hopefully next week we'll actually see her compete in an actual match and just showcase a few select moves she like she did here. Like, really, can we do something better than this? Baby stuff. Outside segment with Legado and Fantasma leaving the arena to get to their car, but it's booted. So they can't go anywhere. And then they see a dead fish on top of the hood of the car. So it's pretty obvious who did that. Yeah. Dead fish. A hey. should be a horse's head next time. Oh crap. Uh pretty deadly defeated Duke Hudson and Dexter Loomis. Yeah. yeah just what, well, what's up with those quarter tops? Like what are they wearing? Mm. Are they like one eighth top? One eighth. Long sleeve. Oh. Like, why not not wear anything at all if you're just going to cover your shoulders? What? Right, because it's, I mean, it, are they like... The... It's fashionable in the UK. Is that what it is? It is what it is. <laughs> are they the woke 2022 rockers, Marty Janetti and Shawn Michael? Oh, wow. They're the 2022 woke um, Billy and Chuck. Without oh, ooh, that yeah. intention. <clears throat> yeah. It's just more like, um, it's more it? organic here. They actually are. They're not playing. They're not playing. They actually are. They actually are. They actually are. Okay. Yeah. So instead of getting of course, um, sued by Glad because of what uh, <laughs> what Billy and Chuck did, they actually got two guys yeah. that are bisexual and. You have this, but at the same time, they're using the gimmick of the old school British rock explosion. Yeah. So they're yeah, acting. I, like well, I was a De- I'm a Def Leppard fan. I've never seen them wear anything like that. Okay. At no least one. this week, we don't get to see another stupid match between Hudson and Loomis, but they're teaming with each other here, so maybe. Yeah. You know. Maybe they'll they're better together than. Um, Loomis and Hudson didn't get on the same page until they saw Wilson and Prince wrap their arms around the girls. After that, Hudson and Loomis were on the same page. Even Hudson was getting cheered for this. Like, oh, now he gets it. Pretty deadly win, and they walk backwards holding their tag titles, and then the lights go out. A spotlight hits the stands, and Joe Gacy tells Breaker to come out. Braun comes out and tries to steal the ring back, the Hall of Fame ring. All Gacy wanted out of this was a championship match in two weeks. You can have the ring back as long as I get a championship title. Like, okay. That's, why don't you just ask? That's showing bad behavior can be rewarded. Oh, why don't you just ask? Why You, you kidnapped my father. You stole his <laughs> oh, ring. Damn. I really want that ring back. Really? Is it that important? Go get another one. Vince would have given you another one. It's not the same as the original. Oh, goodness. Braun agrees to this, and Gacy tells him now that he got what he wanted, all Braun needs to do now is take a leap of fate mm. and pushes him off the stage. What a, a twist. Eh, didn't see that one coming. A group of druids around Braun Breaker and Joe Gacy standing there laughing. The druids, as in the Undertaker's druids. Yeah. Like, hey, um... Speaking of that whole uh, gimmick thing that we got for Sanja, do you want these guys? They're here for free. Yeah, why not? What are these druid robes? They'll be be extras in uh, Edge's next WrestleMania entrance. Oh, there you go. I wonder (laughs) if Vince... I wonder if Vince is actually in one of those druid suits. Like, it was me, Bron. It was me all along. Well, you'll know it's him. It'll be the one that's kind of shaped like an older person. Oh, no, wait, that, that was something else. I think that's the uh, oh, Emperor. No, Maybe no that was would... that? That was Moolah, right? Oh, freaking <laughs> hell. It was shaped like an older person. 
<laughs> shapes. Oh, shapes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, WM NXT stuff is out of the way. Let's move on over to over to AEW, but we're gonna take a break first. Welcome back to the show, everybody, and I have breaking news. Um, Impact Rebellion 22 is over with, and we have the results right here. Um, the pre-show had Eddie Edwards defeat Chris Bay from the Bullet Club. Um, Impact Knockouts World Tag Team Championship. The Influence retained against the Inspiration. Uh, Madison Rain and Tennille Dashwood are still your tag team champions. And meanwhile, the ins- iconic, or I'm sorry, the inspiration, Cassie Lee and Justin McKay, yeah, not so much. Uh, Dean McLean defeated Chris Saban and Switchblade Jay Watt three way. Triple A Reina Reina's championship, Queen of Queens. Taya Valkyrie defeated Deanna Peraza to win the title. Impact's X Division Championship, Ace Austin, won the title in the three-way against Trey Miguel and Speedball Mike Bailey. See, Trey Miguel's the other guy that was in the Rascals that should have been in MSK, but he's all like, nah, I don't want to do it. I guess not. Uh, Tomohito Ishii defeated Jonah. Impact World Tag Team Championship, Violent by Design, retained an 18 Elimination Challenge. Uh, our guy, Matt Cardona, <laughs> Zack Ryder, and Brian Myers defeated Jordan Grace and what? And W. Morris Day, you know who that is, right? No. Big Cass. Oh, yeah, okay. Then. Yeah, well, I don't. That... So. Freaking, why did, okay, Zack Ryder and Brian Myers, the other guy, defeated Big Cass and a girl. We're on a woman, well, she was a woman's champion. Wasn't she the woman's impact champion, or was she I'm just? i not going to uh, lie, I don't follow TNA. Right, me neither. I just remember okay. that she was a champion. Um, the Good Brothers defeated Cardona and Myers again. Oh, Okay. And Impact Knockouts Championship, Tasha Steele retained against Rosemary. And Impact World Championship, uh, Josh Alexander defeated Moose to become the new champion. Anything else happen that night? Nope. Whoa. No, no. Everything is cool. Heath and Rhino are a team. Heath Slater and Rhino. Wow, Rhino's still wrestling? Yeah, he's still wrestling. He was in um, he was in another company and got beat by X Pac. Was it X Pac? <clears throat> wow. Suddenly, I don't feel so old. Oh my god! <laughs> and that's all for Impact. See, AW and WWE are not the only results we have. We have Impact. <laughs> Good stuff. And it did make. Why didn't impact now? <laughs> I tried. Over on AEW, I love when show starts with main event caliber matches, and this was no different. CM Punk taking on Dustin Rhodes, who was wearing a Texas outfit and half of his face was painted blue. So I guess you could say he was blue dust. Oh, yeah. Not to be confused with the blue meaning. No. No. No way. He can never be often imitated, but never duplicated. Uh, CM Punk paying tribute to Bret Hart with his wrestling gear and also saw on Twitter it didn't just stop there. Um, somebody put a side by side video of Bret Hart taking on Goldust and comparing it with this match. Oh, no. A lot of the moves were similar. Uh, you remember how British Bulldog beat Bret Hart at SummerSlam? When the wife was there, all that? Are you talking about that match? Yeah. Well. Um, 
the whole push him into the ropes, come back, and sunset flip into a pin. Okay, now that you say it, yeah. All right, so CM Punk did the British Bulldog move and covered him exactly like that to win the match. Oh, wow. Respectfully, they shook hands before and after the match was over. <clears throat> CM Punk goes to the back signaling a championship around his waist very soon. I wonder what championship match, huh? TNT? I doubt it. And then the Cowboys song hits and out walks Hangman Page and stands face to face with CM Punk. Oh, yeah. That, it's too early. It's very early for this. Yeah, I was going to say, they're already... Yeah, they're the same thing with... Pushing it right out there. But then again, uh, CM Punk's been there longer than Adam Cole. Okay. And they need to push somebody else better than Adam Cole, so CM Punk it is. They just need to give um, Paige, like, a good match. Other than someone that's going to lose to him and then um, go on break because he's hurt, like um, K Omega. Like, CM Punk would be great. Uh, Adam Cole. Who else? Anybody that's been there for a while. Jericho again, I guess. Um... Segment of earlier in the day, Wardlow arrives at the arena, but is told he has to go to his locker room. Remain there until his match starts. Then after the match, go back to the locker room and grab his stuff and leave. Security put him in handcuffs and gets escorted to the locker room. Uh, the Blackpool Combat Club defeated Lee Moriarty, Dante Martin, and Brock Anderson. Anderson. I yeah. I just love I heard Brock and I heard Brock and I'm like, dang, he got pushed down that far after getting beat by the Brock. Team. Brock Anderson. <laughs> I oh, real quick, not to interrupt you, but the uh, Adam Cole guy. I yeah. just looked him up. It's actually cool. He's from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh. Which is where yeah. I'm at. So that's fun. There you go. Now nah, you're a fan. <laughs> yeah, why not? Maybe I'll see him at the, the grocery store at the Wise one day. Oh my god. Hey, you, you're that guy, right? Bay, bay, yeah. Um, again, the combat club gets separated, separate entrances with William Rigo coming out with Yubi Yuda, and then making the beeline to the commentator stable to talk about the match. Aaron Anderson is at ringside cheering on his son. <laughs> if there was ever a time when Brian Anderson seemed like he needed a good match by himself, it would be against any of these three other guys they were facing. It brought out the best in all three of them. Or it brought out the best in Brian James. Uh, backstage segment with Undisputed Elite. All five members lost their matches last week. They're just feeling down. Adam Cole steps up and says he is putting up a challenge. Next week, those five against any five that want to step up against the UE. See, the initials don't even change at all. Still the same. Undisputed Elite, Undisputed Era. Back on the entrance stage, Tony Khan has another huge announcement. All right, Tony, bring it out. He brings out the president of New Japan Pro Wrestling, but they get interrupted by Adam Cole, who says on June 26th in Chicago, AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling presents Forbidden Door. They will get a taste of this Forbidden Door on Friday when Adam Cole faces Ishii in the Owen Hart Memorial Tournament. He also says he has a very special friend who wants to come out and say hello. Kill Switch Jay White from Bullet Club walks out to remind everyone that either Undisputed Elite or Bullet Club is still their era. Backstage segment with Jade Cargill, who loves to hear herself with two bodies. Baddies! Kira Hogan and Red Velvet trying to roast Marina Shafir. So easy. <laughs> She calls herself the problem. Jay says she's the problem solver. See you on my show Friday, bitch. Her words, not mine. I guess they're not team serious. <laughs> oh, of course not. They don't care. Like mm, They're also not sports entertainment. Well, Jericho is. <laughs> uh, Warlow defeated the Butcher. Not only does Warlow get a police escort with handcuffs, MJF has authorized that he also doesn't get any music. 
Meanwhile, the arena is chanting Warlow just the same tune they would chant Goldberg. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Wardlow. Wardlow. Uh, both of these guys are huge, and as soon as the match started, it felt like Andre the Giant versus Hogan. Not like, oh my god, he's huge. No. Irresistible force versus a movable object, that kind of match. Okay. If last week was a lot of chops of slap, this match was a lot of power move with clotheslines and elbows to the face. Um, think of it as JBL doing the clothesline many different times. Oh, wow. Warlow wins this match after four power bombs on Butcher. He walks out of the ring and they put him back in handcuffs while the crowd continues to chant his name. Wardlow. Um, no music at all. It's even better. Yeah, I mean, right. It's, 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 it's hilarious. The mystique. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly defeated Jungle Boy for the Owen Hart Foundation tournament. Uh, he will meet Samoa Joe on the next bracket of the tournament. After the match, Kristen came out to pick up Jungle Boy. He was a bit disappointed, but Kristen told him he'd get him next time. And felt proud of his boy. You'll get him next time. Don't you worry. Come on. What would your dad say? Aw. <laughs> Backstage segment with MJF saying how there's always a snake in the grass. Just because Butcher couldn't get the job done doesn't mean that it's done. Snake in the grass. I wonder what he means by that. Hmm. He calls him a favor for one of his favorite legends and takes out the money to give to Jake the Snake Roberts, who slurs something. I don't couldn't even make it out. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> Trust me. But his guy, Lance Archer, runs in and says he doesn't even need the money. He'll take out Warlow. He just wants to fight. Yeah. Was- uh, Hook defeated Anthony Henry. On his Dynamite debut, Hook defeated an enhancement talent in probably under five minutes. Uh, look of Dan Housen. Have you have you seen what he looks like? No. Dan is Dan Housen. Yeah, it's like, it's like. Oh, I've heard that name. I think. Oh. No, that's somebody. Hey. They just brought up the guy who. I think made uh, GTS. What <laughs> the hell? Hauser. Dan Hauser. Yeah. How? Uh, oh, Dan. Wow. Yeah. Oh, is this the BMX guy or whatever? Is it? I don't even know who this guy was before he joined AEW. I think it's this like, was the guy that was an extreme sport guy. It's some guy who's like on YouTube and. Yeah. Is Somebody it? Somebody was telling me about him. He's the guy that like. Doesn't he handcuff himself and all this weird stuff? Or is that somebody else? Okay. He holds his hands up and curses people, basically. It's like, you're cursed. Totally nice, but totally evil. (laughs) Now, I saw a a little segment thing. Is this the guy where, like, some backpack emo kid? Hook? Okay. That's Taz's son? Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. See, I'm way out of the loop. Yeah, the guy acting like he was a skateboarder beating up on the gothic uh, trench coat mafia guy, which is that guy with the main... Oh. Yeah, that's... I mean, that's Taz's son. I couldn't even believe it either. Like, what? Okay. And he's like... He does what his dad did, but he went to college and he did um all kinds of wrestling out there in college. Oh, like... Um, collegiate. He's a college amateur, collegiate guy. Oh. Yeah, amateur. Oh. And like oh, that is Taz's picture. Don't look anything like right. <laughs> um, yeah, saw him with without all that hair. He is tiny, but they freaking hype him up so much. The crowd loves him, and I was like, oh, okay. He comes out, beat people up, did what his Taz, his dad did at the time, Taz, and just leaves. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't say anything at all. Except for on Rampage, and you, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> it's just hard sell for me because he's, he's not intimidating. He, who knows? He might be like a, 
I see a picture here. He's wearing like Muay Thai shorts. So I wonder if he's like an actual fighter, but yeah. Oh, okay. So because it's just his, I'm looking at him with his uh, simple plan hairdo, and it's just hard for me to to be afraid of him. But okay. <laughs> so Danny has to try to curse Hook again, but it hasn't worked. So he challenges Hook to a match. Who finally broke and smiled a bit as he walked away from the ring towards the back. Hmm. He did. He broke him. Seriously, <laughs> it's like this whole time, and then he like looks at the camera, laughs a bit, and then walks away. It's like, nope. Uh, backstage, Kazarian is being interviewed by Tony Schiavone because he's next in line for a shot at the TNT Championship title. Scorpio Sky interrupts and wants him to hear him out. He tells him his AEW resume: four hundred two days undefeated. TNT champion face of the revolution, of course, tag team with Kaz and Christopher Daniels as SCU because he asked for a favor. Kaz is standing there. Yep, all true. Tell me something I don't know. Scorpio tells him he needs another favor. Let him get his rematch, and when he defeats his Sammy, he will give Kazarian the first shot. Kazarian looks annoyed by all of it, but tells Scorpio he always had his back and gives him his blessing. Show goes to commercial break. <clears throat> The fact that Kazarian's still wrestling is like, damn, dude, you were a part of TNA when I saw it. That was 20 years ago. Real, right. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be in my disbelief here, but as I look more and more at this uh, hook guy with his Muay Thai shorts, I, I just can't help but think that maybe Sagat one day just took a huge Taco Bell dump and then became Hook. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Back from commercial break and from what happened on Saturday night with him giving Scorpio Sky a low blow and then sloppy kissing Tay Conti after the win that turned him heel. Everyone was booing him last week even before the match started. Scorpio Sky walks out to a little bit of a cheer with all ego Ethan Page and Dan Lambert. You know Dan Lambert from Top Team. So it kind of felt weird seeing this transition for Dan Lambert. Like he's getting cheered for speaking the truth. What? <laughs> Sammy Guevara tries to tell Scorpio he is done with him, but Ethan Page tells him to shut up and listen, which got a pop from the crowd. Dan Lambert tells Sammy in a heel type of way, either he gives Scorpio a rematch or he sends Ethan and Scorpio to the ring and give him a pounding his girlfriend dreams about. Wow. <laughs> Which got another pop from the crowd. What the hell is this? Uh, Sammy gives him a counter offer. He'll give Scorpio a match next week if they give them if they give him and Tay Condi a mixed tag match with America's top only fan model, Paige Van Zant. They agree and that's that. I mean it, it's only fair, right? America's top team, America's top only fan. So are, wow, so are it, all these MMA people in our... Okay. Wow, that's kind of cool. Okay. MMA people are taking over. Yeah, basically. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, gotta say the whole full name. She's a doctor. Defeated Daniela Camilla. Okay. Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament. Britt Baker's the hometown queen, wearing black and yellow and coming out to a standing ovation. Her parents are in the front row waving the yellow Steelers towel. She gets accompanied to the ring by Najee Harris and Pat Firmer. I'm not even going to say his name. Of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, this was an enhancement talent match. With the only memorable thing Camilla did was steal one of the yellow towels and use it to choke Baker. And after that, it was all downhill from there for her. Yeah, okay, you're done. That's the only offense you're getting. Uh, Britt Baker used one of the players' gloves to do the Rings of Saturn submission move. Yeah. Throwback. <laughs> Plus the mandible claw locked jaw for the win. Remember Rings of Saturn? At least they're not calling it something else. Uh 
after the match, she grabs the mic and tells the crowd that finally Pittsburgh has a woman with a mic who actually knows how to use it. Right from that, she says the women's division is a disaster without her. She's correct. She ran down some names and wrote to them. Ruby Soho. Okay. Tony Storm with the cake bit in WWE when Charlotte did it to her and then said she's going to want to leave the company too. Oh, I'm going to throw cake at you. I was like, damn. <laughs> I hated that. I really did. Like, she didn't do anything after that. Like, what, you're going to stand there or not? Okay. Tony, get the hell out of here. Can't come back from that. You can't come back from that. And then she gets to the undefeated Girlberg, Jade Cardgill, and she didn't have a problem with her up until she called Pittsburgh ugly. She calls out the baddie section of the two newest members of the baddies to sit the hell down because she's the baddest bitch on the block. Britt Baker turned face with this promo, or she was still going to remain heel, and this was just a one-off because it was in Pittsburgh. She's a hometown. Yeah. Cheap pop. Cheap pop. Uh, Darby Allen defeated El Hilo in a coffin match. Or basically the, you know, yeah. coffin match. Yeah. Remember that time in WWE when the NWO was attacked by an army of Sting? And another one came down the rafters, but he had a mask on, and everybody thought it was Kevin Nash for some reason. But it was really Sting under his own mask. Oh, the real, yeah, when it was, and it was finally the real one. Yeah. He does that spot here. He does that spot in so many different, so many different companies that, like, you forget that he did it in WCW. And then you forget it's him, too. Like, what? Um, he did it in TNA when he was out in the crowd and wearing his own mask, and the guy he was feuding with was just casually walking by him, and then he takes it off with a reveal and bloody beats him up. Uh, the same thing happened here. He's with the crowd blending in with a hat on and a sign that says he's there for our Darby Allen. During the match, Marqueen and the Blade decide to interfere in the match and take him out into the guardrail towards the crowd. Marqueen grabs the sign from this guy and rips it apart. But you also see security and standing by trying to keep everyone away and pushing this guy back until he reveals himself. The look on that security's face. I don't think he knew. I'm just like, oh, shit, it's you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, man. <laughs> uh, Marquine, Marquine turns around and Sting obviously taking off his own mask. After maybe 10 minutes of the match beating each other up, Andrade takes his RB towards the coffin and opens up, revealing thumbtacks on the other side of the hood of the coffin. It's a casket. Come on. You just can't call it a casket match because you're going under. Yeah. Ridiculous. Darby hits a dive from the ring to Andrade, and they both land inside the coffin. It doesn't look like the tags were real as Darby closed the hood off the coffin on top of Andrade's back. I didn't see any blood. Out walks Andrade's personal assistant who tries to punch Darby Allen and help his employer. He even takes off his shirt. No reason at all. Just takes it off. Like, yeah, I gotta take off this shirt. Hold on. Darby scoop slams the assistant onto the hood of the coffin, and the poor guy looks hurt. Again, no reason at all. Dumb tax look fake. No blood on him and no blood on Andrade. They're not even tax. Ta- ta- they just look like tax. They're good actors. They're good actors. They, they, they oversell it just like a telenovela. <laughs> or in both versus Hogan. Oh, can't wait to do a Hogan special. <laughs> Politics. Darby closed the hood of the coffin on Andrade and wins the match. The match is over. Out watch the Hardy Boys and do their move. You know the the you know entrance move like. Eh, eh, eh. Oh. Apparently they've been on AW Elevation and Dark. The YouTube channels facing off other tag teams would make total sense because I thought Jeff Hardy was hurting his arm from too much gluing his entrance pose. Like you're overextending your arms too much for that pose, Jeff. No, he's hurt from wrestling every day now. You know, people get older eventually. You gotta... Jeff also. Right. You got to remember, he started his career at 16 years old. Right. They were enhanced with talent at one time. <laughs> For three years. 
over on Rampage, Adam Cole versus Ishii in the Owen Hart Foundation Men's Tournament. It's like the first match always has to be this special. Damn. Like opening the show is you get this type of match, and then once the pay per view happens, like, oh crap. Since Wednesday, I just kept saying, oh shit, Adam Cole is going up against a Japanese wrestler. Can't wait to see it. I was expecting it to be like Samoa Joe and Suzuki. Instead, it was a lot of rest hoes and a bunch of not selling from Ishii. Like, Ishii's a, Ishii's a like, big dude, though. So. Oh, okay. so, Adam Cole did a lot of flexing, trying to piss off the wrestler who I would describe as a Japanese version of Miro. Or, as you know him, Rusev. Oh, okay. So it's like a big guy, but, you know, don't sell anything. Again, Adam Cole tries to elbow his face. Ishii no sells it. Gets the reaction from the crowd and hulks up for a bit. Outside the ring, Rocky Romero and Orange Cassidy is cheering for Ishii and supporting him. A lot of reversals, and then you see Adam Cole getting the upper hand, and that's when you decide to go to the commercial break. Great. You know, just don't show Adam Cole doing stuff. <laughs> yeah. Back from yeah, back from break, Ishii hits a delayed superplex from the top rope. A lot of back and forth pummeling and elbows to the face between both of them. Jay, Jay White walks out to attack Rocky Romero, which distracts. Ishii and Cole hits a low blow followed by a knee to the face and the win. Adam goes to celebrate on a stage with Jay White and Too Sweet. Just, you know, Undisputed Elite and the Bullet Club and Cahoots. Hmm. They're friends. Wait until Kenny Omega comes back and then be like, yo, what are you doing with Jay White? <laughs> Backstage, the Chris Jericho Appreciation Society are not allowed in the arena. Only Daniel Garcia, since he's wrestling. Security is standing around preventing the rest of the group to come outside, but Jericho and the society tells Daniel to do, do some sports entertainment stuff as he walks towards his locker room. Good luck! <laughs> Meanwhile, the, Jericho tells the head of security that didn't let them in that he was going to file a complaint to HR about him. They walk away, one of them asks, what's HR? Doofus. <laughs> um, back from commercial break, Hook is walking around trying to get interviewed by Alexi Nair when they are stopped around the corner by Dan Housen, who was holding an empty bag of Lay's chips. I didn't understand. Like, what was the significance of this? Because I saw that. He got mad at him. Cut the bag of chips. It's, yeah, it's the confusion of everything. Like, Why? The littlest thing is a segment. I mean, I mean, you know, Booker T versus Edge. I know. Yeah, was it that for a shampoo? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I vaguely remember that. Hey, it's just a random. Okay. Random thing. You see the chips all laid out on the floor, probably crunched and stepped on by Dan Housen, who says something I couldn't catch. Or the subtitles couldn't catch it either. But he does ask, does that make you mad? Mm -hmm." To which Hook pushes him up against the wall and finally speaks. You wanted my attention? You got it now. (laughs) A huge prop from the crowd, and I can just imagine Billy Gunn doing the whole, she talks? When China spoke for the very first time when DX initiated the split. Like, wait a minute, she she's talking he's he yeah, he talked like apparently. I thought he was mute for the entire time. Ah, uh, they shouldn't have done that. <laughs> they sh- yeah, they should have just perfect. like not nah, it's too early. It was too early for him to talk. They should have just like kept it to where mm, grunts and then walks away, but it does have a match yeah. against him. All right. Um Lance Archer defeated Serpentico, or not to be confused with Serpentor from Cobra. (laughs) Because that's all I was thinking about, like Serpentor from Cobra, G.I. Joe. No, 
okay. That's just me. That's fine, I guess. This was supposed to be a match, apparently. <laughs> what? I said I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Yeah, I'm glad that. <laughs> uh, Sir Pentacle immediately does a dive to the outside of Archer, who doesn't even sell it. And that right there is the only offensive move he did on Archer. The match lasted about maybe a minute, oh. which I think they needed for Sean Spears to hype up the match between Lance Archer and Wardlow. After the match was over, Archer continues to attack Sir Pentacle, which wasn't really necessary. It's just, I'm just going to beat up people. Eddie Kingston defeated Danny Garcia. All right, the headbanger of the night. Finally. Kingston and Garcia wasted no time in brawling in and out of the ring. Garcia is much more of a technical wrestler. I'm sorry, superstar? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, sports entertainment. You know, we appreciate that in the society. But he got in a lot of brawling and survived the punches. Kingston was throwing at him. Garcia adapted in the brawling environment, but we, he wasn't expecting getting pummeled by the look of his bloody mouth. Dude was out of it. <laughs> After the match, Kingston took his belt and hit the mat with it, which everyone thought he was going to hit Garcia with it. Instead, he grabs the mic and forces out of the loop, and not all there, Garcia to look at the camera to say he is saving the belt, pleading for Jericho. Uh, Keith Lee and Swerve interview. Mm-hmm. Keith Lee is the type of guy who would avoid cussing during an interview because he was asked to talk about Taz interfering in his match. <laughs> Keith Lee is also the type of guy who would tell his uh, friend to, you know, say this word instead of that word. Oh, of instead of that. <laughs> Swerve, help me out here. Swerve explains that Keith Lee is a little perturbed right now and then looks over at Keith Lee and thanks him for telling him how to say a new word. (laughs) He calls out Calvin and Hobbs and of course this feud is not over with. And finally, the freaking main event of the night. Uh, Jade Cargill defeated Marina Shafir. Sorry, guys. For the TBS Championship. Um couple of things. I love how Jay Cargill's hair is green as a shot to the IWC. The, who keep calling her green. <laughs> and this is just a reminder to them. Yep, I'm green. Thanks for calling it out. Here, I'm going to dye my hair green. There. <laughs> uh, see her take... She mean shit, dude. She took control of the match within the first five minutes against an MMA black belt. Like, what? Yeah. And they made a point to say that Marina Shafir is an MMA black belt. What is an MMA black belt? By the way? Uh, mixed martial arts, black belt, karate, I, mean, I don't know. Martial arts. <laughs> uh, How do you get this? a black belt in MMA? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. She's also a black belt, but not just an MMA. But she's also a black belt in something. But uh, Jade, sure, maybe manager, Jiu-Jitsu, maybe Muay. Well, not Muay, but Muay Thai or but some other thing. <laughs> Jade's manager, Mark, says, "Like, yeah, I also have a black belt. I bought it off Amazon for ten dollars." Yeah, it's holding up my pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, he like not to hold up his pants, but a, a black belt. Oh, he just bought Cor- the black belt. Okay. He bought the black belt to say that, like, yeah, I also bought there a black belt off of uh, Amazon for ten dollars. It was really cheap. You don't have to do all that. <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, they made a point to, like, yeah, she's also a man. She's a black belt and this and that. And But Jade Cargill just freaking takes control of her for, like, the first five minutes of the match. And it fucking pissed people off on Twitter. <laughs> How dare they? She's green. Yeah, we know. That's to piss you off because you're a toxic wrestling fan, whatever. Uh, purist. <laughs> Cargill takes Shafir to the outside with her manager, Mark. Is, while her manager, Mark, is distracting the referee, outside in the front row are the baddies, two ordinary women, and the other two are Kira Hogan and Red Velvet, who throw popcorn at Shafir and pummel her. Like, yeah, boo, throw the popcorn at her and everything, and they 
still the referee still like whatever. It was Cargill's longest match since her, the debut, and she sold a lot of moves from an MMA fighter too. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, MMA black belt. <laughs> yeah, got it. Yeah, I don't write these; they did it themselves. I remember both... those people would say, "Don't mess with me, bro. I train UFC. I train you." <laughs> <laughs> both of them looked intimidating from the start. Cargill hits a choke slam on Shafir on a table that doesn't break, but the legs give out. Ah, oh, freaking hell. Shafir hit a lot of stiff drags and towards the end went for an ankle lock submission, just like her best friend taught her. You know her best friend. She's your girl. Well, and then she should have taught her the arm bar then. All right. <laughs> Cargill's sure legs. Yeah. It's the. Um, or, you know, her husband probably taught her something, but the only thing her husband taught her how to do is, uh, never mind. Uh, Cargill's legs are too long, which she used her other leg to boot Marina in the face. She did her finisher, which was a Glamazon slam and pins her for the win. Cargill is now 30 and 0, Girlberg. And she got the balloons and streamers. See, it's kind of in the name, though, too. Car Gilberg. Yeah. <laughs> Car Gilberg. Gilberg. Hey. Car Gilberg. Gilberg. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break. Yeah, let's take a break. Um, we'll be right back after this little break. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Uh, start off with SmackDown. Before the show started, another dark segment, which saw LA Knight come out again and introduce his newest client into the mo- into the Knight Model Agency. And this time, it was Mansoor. You know him, right? Yeah. No? Yeah? Uh, mm-hmm. Which he usually wrestles when they go to Saudi Arabia or when they need to hype up their matches over there. Bring Mansoor in. I guess he basically means he's going to be more making more TV appearances or Saudi Arabia is coming up. Oh, that's true. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they haven't said anything, but that's true. Mm-hmm. Well, it's Saudi Arabia season. I see Mansoor. <laughs> like the, the, not the hedgehog, the, what do they call it? When it comes out and sees its shadow. Uh, groundhog. Groundhog. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it must be. It's Monsoor season. Okay. Show opens up with a contract signing between Charlotte and Ronda. Tell us how you felt about that. I mean, anytime Ronda Rousey comes out, I'm I'm happy. And I also like Charlotte's uh, leather short sleeve shirt mechanic boiler suit. Thing. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so it's a win all around. It's a win. Um, geez, with Gulak getting beat up and oh. doing, yeah, he went totally went into civilian mode. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I love how he's a wrestler. He used to be a wrestler. He's no longer a wrestler. He's now a um, working for Adam Pierce. But when he wrestled, he didn't like get hurt like this all the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> now that he's a civilian, it's like, oh, you hit me in the stomach. I must go down. <laughs> he's more <laughs> fragile now. He's more fragile. Can't be doing that, or you might get sued. He's a fan now. He can't. He doesn't. Ha- he's not able to handle that. And then once you bring him back up to wrestling status, like, oh, that yeah, kick you in the stomach. <laughs> the kick to the stomach to an ordinary person that might have hurt them but to me no <laughs> I'm a wrestler again he's gonna say his prayers and eat his Hogan vitamin chewables oh chewables Flintstones you know, ones that make you uh, oh human. boy <laughs> um moving on <laughs> uh Xavier Woods defeated Butch again yeah Freaking hell, yeah. great. 
Uh, we can tell Pat Mac stole something last week when he called Bush the rabbit wolverine because this week he called Bush the rabbit wildebeest. Wow. You should have just left it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell is a wildebeest? Not a compliment. I know that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> or just don't mention it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, <laughs> backtracking, like you call them wolf, rabbit Wolverine. Yeah, I think he got in trouble. No, no WrestleMania match for you next year. Oh my oh. goodness! <laughs> but every, but I guess they acknowledge it. It's like, all right, you got to call him something else this week. The wildebeest is fine. What the hell is a wildebeest? Yeah. I don't know. Just say it. <laughs> Like, all right, it, it sounds the same thing. W. It's similar, yeah. During the first minute of the match, I kept asking, "Where the hell is his energy?" When he saw a butch, um, which got answered right away when he started working on every part of Xavier Woods' body. He even did a move I haven't seen in a while. He hooks Woods' mouth and throws him into the turnbuckle. Which I was like, damn, those some old school wrestling moves. Yeah. Or some old school heel moves That's from Dirty Fighting. <laughs> dirty Fighting. Hook to the mouth, throw them. Like, I haven't seen that in a while. What else? The, um, the forearm to the eye. Uh, or rub the forearm on the eye and, like, what are you doing? <laughs> or when um, Hornswoggle's dad did the whole apron thing. Yeah. What is his name? I forgot his name. Oh, you're talking about um oh shoot, now you made me forget. Fit Finley. There you go. Finley, yeah. And he loved to fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at the Irish. So here's the weird thing though that I'm thinking. So they had him do all those moves, which are obviously underhanded tactics. Yeah. But then they had him kind of break ranks with um Seamus. So now, are they going to are they going to have him turn face, which would be weird, since he was doing all those moves, or are they going to have Seamus turn face? Well, what do you think? Oh wow. Well, because I would think there there's there's a crack in the the arm or whatever you want to call. It. So I mean, somebody's going to go face, or are they just going to break up and both stay heel, which would be weird. It would be weird, but I would think him going on his own with. Seamus and Ridge staying together, they would stay heel. But again, why would they have him do such heel moves and then have him turn face? Or are Damn. they just hoping that people won't put that together? Like, well, that's okay. I mean, yeah, even jow, jow, just eyes. all right. Even when he went face on NXT, I'm sorry, he doesn't work for NXT. Whatever, Pete Dunn. <laughs> even when Pete <laughs> Dunn worked for NXT, and he he went face, like he still did all these moves, but oh, not like dirty face, like. Right. Not a dirty face, but like work your body, like okay. not the hook oh, like the to fish the mouth, hook and all that the stuff. fish yeah, hook. Yeah, that's no. what I mean. Yeah, like I've never seen that before from him, and so it was just... new. Yeah. Um. <laughs> before the commercial break, we hear Pat McAfee say that Butch is running wild on SmackDown. Oh, what you gonna do? Oh my goodness, brother! <laughs> <laughs> Pat just. Works on his own, man. It's like the rabbit wolverine running wild. Yeah, he's, you're just bringing got, it back. You know what he did? He went and got himself like an old school, uh, one of those C and say books, but like WWE edition. And he's just like pressing it, like, okay, what's my next quote gonna be? Oh, okay. Let's use that one. <laughs> if he says <laughs> next week, if it's next week, he says slap into a slim gym. That's oh, it. We're done. <laughs> We know uh, what he's up to. Yeah, we know what he's up to. Pull the or, string on his back and see the next thing he says. Or just he got like a book of things uh, not yeah. to say for from Vince, and oh. it's like, see this book right here. I'm just gonna throw in the garbage. I'm gonna say <laughs> all these words, all of them, uh, belt and all this stuff, wrestler, wrestler. I'll say whatever I want to say. Really. What are you gonna do? Fire me? No. Yeah, he's got but, his his. Uh, pension coming from the NFL. He's not worried. Oh my gosh. Back from commercial break and joy manipulation from Butch. You just have to be really flexible if you're going to face Butch. This man will make your knuckles, fingertips, or even your earlobes sore from the way he handles you. He went after the earlobes, man. 
Like, who does that? <laughs> well, people short fish, of time. A fish hook and an earlobe um, grab. Like, come here. Like, yeah, you're right. Mom. <laughs> how big you get? <laughs> like, he grabbed the earlobe and twisted it. Like, damn, are you freaking serious? <laughs> what the hell? Finally, Couldn't Woods hits the arm most. Bar. Oh, finally, <laughs> Woods hit the most devastating move in wrestling. And Paige's favorite name for the name she probably named it the Backwoods. The Backwoods. <laughs> Butch has another fit and pals as he walks out of the ring, grabs security, and throws him into the mat. He leaves the arena through the crowd. And you're right. I mean, what are they going to do with him? It's like, well, I, if he does turn face, he's fair in face. It's not going to change him. He's still gonna be a freaking fighter. Okay, so I guess it's just yeah, you know, it's just I feel like with making making him do all those moves, you think that they were they were kind of like hinting. But usually, when the, if there's a trio or a faction, and the one guy that breaks off on his own usually becomes the face, and then he'll probably be attacked by the two. Yeah, that's, we'll see. that's true. Um, Gunther defeated Teddy Goods, enhancement talent. And he hits a massive power bomb and wins, destroying this man's dream of becoming a pro wrestler someday. Darn. And well, a win is a win. We'll see him again. A win is a win. This guy just gave me five extra points for my roster. It's all good. No. <laughs> um, Terry Goods? No, I don't think we'll see him again. He didn't get uh, a display here like they did with the other guy, Jeff. Well, I was going to say, you know what match I would like to see at WrestleMania? Terry Good versus Jeff. Jeff Brooke. Yeah. Uh, uh, the main event um, for night one. When we do our trades coming up, I think I'm going to trade uh, one of my guys for for Terry Teddy Goods or Jeff. Yeah. I think I'm I think I'm going to trade uh, the Usos for uh, Teddy Goods and Jeff Brooke. I see oh, good things at... in their future. Oh my. <laughs> Uh, that's a bunch of negative points. <laughs> yeah, After a break, we see a promo segment from Xia Li, a.k.a. the girl who kicks causes concussions. You get extra points for, the, for that. Um, damn, concussions? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's like an automatic 50 points. <laughs> damn. Like, do it for the team. <laughs> Take one for the team. Um... The main event, Jey Uso versus Riddle. Not the main event on the show, but the, he's named the main event. The right-hand man, Jey Uso versus Riddle. Captain K versus Riddle. There you go. Such an exciting match. Oh, uh, yeah, it was. Well, now you have Riddle, right? Didn't you take RK? I took, no? Yeah, I took RK Bro as a tag team. Yeah, one of your guys. <laughs> At one point on the outside, the right hand man of Roman Reigns, Jay, does Randy Orton's side suplex on the commentator's table. On Riddle, while staring down Orton, who as always looks like a perplexed father. Especially with the mustache. <laughs> there goes that word again perplexed. perplexed. Thanks, Keith Lee. That means confused for all of our <clears throat> yes. younger fans. Younger fans, perplexed. You learn a new word each podcast, each episode. So when, you got, when you guys graduate from that uh, technical college, I want some of the credit. Later, it's done to Jimmy Uso by Randy on Orton, and everyone pops for it. The tribal chief, Roman Reigns, and Paul Heyman are seen backstage watching the match and their reaction when Jay loses to a devastating small package from Riddle. Can't beat it. You can't. It's just the yeah. most devastating move in all of wrestling. Um, that's two and zero for the past two weeks, and maybe just maybe we might see the Usos win at Backlash. Yeah, I think we need to, and I think I should get extra points if they do. Oh fuck! <laughs> Damn, <laughs> you already are with them. <laughs> they defended the tag belts, and they won tag belts. They're gonna. Then we'll, we'll get the belt. Uh, I 
I know that doesn't make sense, but hear me out. Stranger things have happened here in the WWE. Brother. <laughs> Mad Cat Moss defeated Angel. Right. Hey, was it really necessary? I guess. Oh. Before the match, back, there was a backstage segment with Madcap and Happy Corbin, where Corbin tried to squash the beef before he even continues and wants Moss to go back to the wasting where. Yeah, okay. Moss, who is for the children because all his jokes are corny, tells Corbin odds of that happening is as much as you can. Then he laughs. Like, dude, that joke wasn't even funny. Right, so I'm wondering, though, is that like his way of saying, hey, look, I just made a bad joke, so we're together again. Yeah, but I guess um, Corbin didn't take it that way, because he uh, came out to attack yeah. him. I like, I don't like your corny jokes, man. Not when they're at his expense. Right? After Moss takes care of Angel in the quick match, Happy Corbin runs out and attacks Moss, only to go outside and take the Honor Giant Memorial Trophy with him to get it back. It's, no, he owns it, so that means he owns two. Because Sure, why not? Like, it doesn't make sense at all. Like, he already has one at home. You gotta have a why pair. Take the other one unless <laughs> a pair of Andres. Um, after the break, Sammy Zayn enters the Tribal Chief's locker room, which is pretty intense already. With both tag team champions losing to RK Bro over the last two weeks, it felt like a lower soldier asking for the mob boss to help him with the situation that he's having. And in return, he will help him out with whatever situation he needs. You know, capiche. <laughs> I love how Roman doesn't even look at Zane one bit. It's almost like he doesn't want to acknowledge him. And he shouldn't. And he shouldn't. Yeah. But Zane oh. says, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you as my tribal chief. I acknowledge you as a champion. But if you acknowledge, But I acknowledge you if you help me out. And I will acknowledge you some more. And he just sits there brooding and staring at whatever has passed him. And Zane, like a court jester, tells him at the same time that he's no rat. But he heard RK Bro and McIntyre talk about the tribal chief. Oh. <laughs> After he tells his case, he walks out and Roman does this Will Smith thing where he tells the Usos that they're talking bad about him on his show. Go take my name out their mouths. <laughs> oh, God. I, I figured they were going to. Back to the commentary team of Pat McAfee and Michael Cole, and Pat yells out, Put some respect on. <laughs> Keep that man's name out your freaking mouth. <laughs> um, yeah. Drew McIntyre is probably going to be the next one in line to face Roman. Yeah. Because, that'd be good. because of all that. Like, I just see it after. Nah, I mean, and it's two weeks, and they still haven't hyped up Nakamura against him. And yeah, I, I, I forgot there was a match between him and Nakamura in, at the pay per view. Like, it's not even acknowledged at all. It's all like he could have done something on this episode. Are you talking about Backlash? Yeah. Oh. Wasn't that supposed to be the next opponent? That's what I had heard. I didn't know if it was official, though. Uh, okay, I guess I'm wrong then. I don't know. It might be. But I didn't... I heard that that's what... I thought that's what people were saying. But I didn't think that that was official. But, I mean, it's coming out soon. So. Yeah, it's coming out soon. So why not hype it up? Right. They're... Um, uh, uh, main event time, I guess. Is it main event? Yeah, it is main event time. Drew McIntyre defeated Lemmy Zane via count out, though, in the lumberjack match. How do you win via count out in a lumberjack match? Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think that was a thing. And for those that don't know what a lumberjack match is, let's explain the rules. Two people start in the middle of the ring, and surrounding them outside the ring are Hmm, around 20, usually. Is Lumberjacks. I thought it was 10. Okay. Like, yeah, that makes the, sense, like five each side, I guess. 
but yeah, back in the day, it was 20. I remember 20 of them surrounding the ring. Now it's just like 10 of them. Five heels and five faces. Okay. Um, surrounding the ring and keeping the opponents from leaving the arena or going out to the crowd and putting them back in the match. You can even attack them and all that stuff. That's what the Lumberjack um, right. is for. But to be defeated in a countout? Come on. Yeah, no, uh, so the whole match was chaotic from start to finish. Even the Lumberjacks were fighting each other outside the ring. Fun match for the main event to see everyone showing up and participating even for 15 minutes. Um, RK Bro had that stressed and worrisome look on their faces when they saw the usuals arrive. When the entire Lumberjacks were fighting each other as well as Drew, Sammy decided to leave again and go through the crowd to fight another day. WWE official Adam Pearce comes out and declares that Zemi Zayn and Drew McIntyre will fight again next week in the Steel Cage match. It's the um, Leah Mayavia thing here again. Oh, uh... it, Keep doing the same. <laughs> yeah, right. The same thing. Keep doing the same thing week after week. But the way the Adam Pierce announced that, it made me think of Teddy Long when he would come out and tell the heels they would go one on one against the Undertaker player <laughs> or a tag team match. Tag team match. Tag team match is always great. Yeah, they and that's all we have for SmackDown. Um, did you add up your points? I have not added them all up because I'm still trying to figure out how it works. <laughs> oh, so I have. I mean, I, well, and then you just said that, like, so we shouldn't count certain. Yeah, because I didn't count one for Mandy Rose, even okay. though she showed up during Roxy's um, promo. Like, so it, wasn't, she, it wasn't it Mandy wasn't Mandy Rose's promo. promo. It wasn't her promo. Uh, it was Roxy's promo. But she showed okay. up. And there was no so, attack, so, you know, there was that. Okay. So, I, so I did that. If you want to count it as yours, go ahead. But no, if you're not going to do it, I'm not going mean, okay. to. Okay. So... Week one, um, I have Braun Breaker with three points, Edge with six points, Damian Priest with six points, Cody Rhodes with six points. Like Edge, Damian Priest, and Cody Rhodes did a – well, Edge and Damian Priest did a promo and then attacked AJ Styles. Cody Rhodes did a promo and then won a match. Right? So that would mean six and yeah. five. That would mean 11. Or three and five. That would mean eight. Damn, I don't know how to count. <laughs> Thanks, Scott Steiner. <laughs> um, RK Bro with negative one. Thanks, guys. I got Seth Rollins with six points. The promo and the sneak attack. Uh, poor Butch with negative one. Austin Theory winning a championship title. That's 10 points. I told you that was going to hurt me. Damn it. Carmelo Hayes with the win on one match and then a sneak attack on the other. Or was it a promo? It was a promo. Not a sneak attack. Bobby Lashley with a promo. Three points. Gunther with the win. Five points. Grayson Waller with the win and a promo. That's eight points. Santos Escobar with the win. I mean, I'm sorry, with the promo and the loss. That's three points minus one. Two points. Great. Thanks, guy. So Austin Theory is my champion for the week. My number one guy. Carmelo Hayes is my number. Grayson Waller, Carmelo Hayes, and Cody Rose are number tied with number two at eight points. Uh, week one for the woman got Rhea Ripley with negative one point. Charlotte with three points for that uh, promo. No points for Raquel Rodriguez who didn't show up. 
got Nikita Lyons with the three points for that promo. Um, Liv Morgan with negative one point. Great. Cora Jade with three points for that promo. Dana Brooke. Who's at nine points? Negative one plus the ten points that she got for winning the champ the freaking twenty four seven title. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. Alva Fire, no points. Ivy Nile, no points. Bianca Belair, three points for that promo. And Dakota Kai, no point. And hold on one minute. Dana Brooke lost a title. Winning a well, title. Yeah. Successfully defending a title. Defeated in title match. Yeah, it was a negative one. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. So Dana Brooke is my number one girl. Wait, so if you lose the title, you only lose one point? Yeah. Okay. okay. Unless it's a pay per view, it's double. Okay. Okay. So. Help me out on the first one. Help me out. Okay. So Drew McIntyre, he didn't do anything. Correct? He won the match. He won the match via count. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And so then there happened? was a prom. There was a Brad Six promo, and he so count won out the match. Was how many points? Count out is still ten points, regardless oh. of how you win. Uh, points? single match, singles match is a five point. Five points. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Singles match, victory by pinfall, submission, or knockout is five. five. Victory by DQ countout or forfeit is three. Three. Yeah. yeah. And then he had the promo, right? Promo, yeah. Uh, That's six. 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 Um, Jay lost. That's negative one. Shit. Did, what? Right. He lost against uh, um, the, what's the guy? What's the bro? Yeah, name? he did. Negative one. Negative one. Yeah. Uh, what did Solo? Se- we didn't talk about Solo Sokoa. What did he do? I know he did something. He was involved with um promo. Was it a promo yeah. or was it a sneak attack? No, it was a sneak attack. Okay. That was That's a three. Three. Yeah. Uh, Seamus. What would would you consider? That really wasn't anything. <laughs> it wasn't a promo, right? I mean, it wasn't a promo, nor was it any kind of attack. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't true. count that. Yeah. Don't. Happy Corbin did a was that a promo? That was a, a segment? promo segment and a win. Okay, so that's five and three. Five and eight. Um, MVP. Remember him? Do, I mean, promo. Would you consider it a promo? You would consider it a promo. Yeah. With um, okay, because he's his manager. He's manager, so okay. him talking is him promoting his guy. It's a promo. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, no Dolph Ziggler, as far as I remember. The AJ Styles, he he got beat though. He got beat up in the backstage, so I don't know do I get anything for him getting beat up. <laughs> no. Um, but he did or have a promo. He did okay. have a promo. Yeah, that's when he came in and he was okay. Uh, okay. Um. Oh my, well, so but we can't count. Would you count almost in the promo too, since he was if there? He, or he was out? there. Okay. It was a promo about him. Okay, I'll take it. With his manager, so you're basically getting double the points with his manager. Double man the points. Uh, Ezekiel, uh, three points, right? Because they did the promo. No, that wasn't a sne- hmm? Jackson. Yeah, Ezekiel. He got <laughs> attacked, so that's not. That's not doesn't count anything. I wouldn't um, anything. No. He wins but I the got match. the three for the segment though, right? It's a segment and then the match win. And then the match. Cause which is five, right? Can D- DQ? Oh, it was a count. Oh, it was DQ. Three. Three. That's a three. Okay. And then we have Kevin Owens, which he lost. Negative so that's one. Negative one. Promo. All right. Plus a promo. promo. So that's oh. two. Yeah, two. Yeah. One and three is two. Um, then we have Natalia. Now, do we count all the shows or just the? Because she was like on all, pretty much every show. Well, not oh, all. Freaking how she was. <laughs> yeah, you count all the shows. Shit. So what did she um, do? She, had she at least one. She won a match. Show. She won a match on NXT, and then she. What? What? Participated. Uh, yeah, five. 
five, and then she participated in a promo on SmackDown. Was that wasn't the NXT? Well, she didn't do the promo right when she was being yelled at on NXT, so that doesn't. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't well, her promo. It I'll, was her fine. promo. I won't take it. It was her promo. Like they well, interviewed her for coming in and winning the match, and then okay, here comes. Nikita Lyons were like, yeah, okay. "Hey, I want a match." Okay. <laughs> old right. lady, old lady, yo, you can't hear. And Latalia's all like, "I can hear you, dude. I'm not old." Yeah. <laughs> all right, Rousey was uh, three points. Three points segment. Yeah, wasn't really a sneak attack because they were in front of each other. So well, I'll just take the three <laughs> for the um... no Becky Lynch, right? No Becky Lynch this week. No Becky Lynch. Until next week. Yeah. If she lost that. Sasha Banks, I get five. Correct? No, it's a tag match. Yeah. Do I get for both, right? So was it eight for a tag match? It was four and four? No, just you didn't have Naomi. Oh, I thought we said, okay, so we're doing it where you have to have both. Like, you didn't have Naomi, so that means, did you get Naomi also? No. Mm. No? That's no. uh, five. So just for the one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Wendy Chu, she lost. She distracted? She didn't, wasn't even in a match. Oh, she wasn't in the match. Okay. So nothing for her, then. Uh, Sonia Deville, she was in a segment. Yeah. Go ahead. Did you consider that her segment? That was oh. her segment with Bianca. Okay. okay. So three. Um, Tiffany Stratton uh, won. Five. With the, you know, with she the, won the match. Whatever spin. Carmella? I don't remember Carmella being involved. In no, she's not there yet. She's still in the honeymoon. No Maurice. <laughs> no Maurice. Shayna, Shayna, Shayna was with, um, with Natalia. Uh, Natalia, yeah. So that's the three. Yeah. And then Asuka. I don't uh, recall seeing her. Night. Yet. All right, so for my guys, if I add them all up, I've got 9, 20, 23, 20, 29, 32, 34 minus 1. So I have 33 points. Who has 33 points? I do. No, all together. I was just adding them all up. Oh, damn. I got to add them up? <laughs> oh, I no, I guess not. I thought we were. Okay. <laughs> um, for the women, I've got... Twenty-nine. Okay. And my number one is. I want to say for the guys, my number one um, is. I think it is. Make this up better. My number one. Got eight. Somebody got me eight points, and now I forgot who it is. I can't line this up. <laughs> Not shameless. I believe it's Happy Corbin, right? He won a match, and yeah, and yeah, it, he got me eight, so he's he, my number one guy. And then obviously Natal- Natalia is my number one. Okay. The moment she got me eleven, but she was on both sh- two shows. Kevin Owens got me six. Second place. Negative one. I only lost one match each. One match uh, male and one match female. Great. I lost a <laughs> puzzle. <laughs> yeah, but your guy, your it was your guy who beat my guy. So you've got like a oh Butch it, and RK bro. Was, yeah, if it was NFL, NFL, it'd be uh, they count for more, right? And with, with within your division. Yeah, they do. It's, in yeah. Division. Yeah. In From what I've seen. All right. 
And that was week one. Awesome. Week one. I'll get it back. I'll get it back and back last. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the show and supporting us. You can find us on the Nerd Vinyl Network or TNN for short, which is a conglomerate of podcasts to promote each other's common interests. So give them all a follow as well. Check out the link tree at linktree.com, the Nerd Vinyl Network, for more information on that. And don't forget to tell them I sent you. Follow us on Twitter at all underscore things underscore pod. Follow me on Twitter at Million Dollar Geek. Listen to us on Spotify or anchor.fm. Totally free. At all things wrestling. Check us out on YouTube and smash that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram for more wrestling content. We will be back in a few days with the Under the Apron short Dark Side of the Ring style documentaries for wrestling time junkies just like us. Hey, wrestlers aren't the only thing hiding and swept under the ring apron. Yeah. From now on, we will be asking questions before the show ends and it will appear on the Spotify episodes as a Q&A. Hopefully you'll be reading the episode description. Click on see more and you will see two links. The first one is if you want to leave a message. Doesn't matter if you like trolling. We will still air it. The next link, if you want to support our podcast, we will never charge you for episodes if you're never too good. You have a right to hear us. But if you want to support us or our cause and send us money so we can buy better equipment, go ahead and click that second link. It will ask you if you want to donate money once a month. Charges range from $0.99 cents to $4.99 to $9.99. Once we figure out what to do with these three and learn how to make shirts or bumper stickers, you guys will be the first to know. You know what? We're making stickers. First thing I want to do. We're going we're gonna to go with stickers. Cool. I want to put these stickers in um, drive through places and be like, listen to our show. After that, scroll down some more and it's a Q&A. This week's question, who was your favorite wrestling odd couple? It could be a regular team or a mixed tag team, or it could be a wrestling couple. Don't matter. I want to see. I want to hear your answers. Or even um, a wrestler and a manager. It could be a wrestler and a manager. It could have been Adam Cole and Keith Lee. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, either send us your answers in the Q and A, or send us your answer via email. The email is podcast all things wrestling at gmail dot com, and we will air it. Or you can give us a call and send us your voice message. Do it. Thank you once again for listening to us. That's a wrap.